Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto has two summoning contract Chunin exams. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Duotion and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. The New Summoner. Arg, Hiro Senen. Teach me something cool. Yelled Naruto to his perverted sensei. Shut up, you lousy brat. Here now try this said Jiraiya as he flashed through the hand seals for the summoning jutsu and summoning the toad gama. So cool. Naruto yelled, he imitated Jiraiya, smeared his blood on his hand, did the four hand seals, and slammed his hand on the ground before promptly disappearing in a puff of smoke. Oh shit, I forgot to make him sign the contract. Yelled Jiraiya. But Naruto. Oh I Irosenin, no toad came Irosenin. Naruto said as he looked around for his wayward teacher. Suddenly a bolt of lightning struck down from the sky a few feet in front of Naruto, holy shit. Screamed Naruto as he was blasted away from the spot. Out of the smoke came out a titanic wolf, thrice the size of Naruto himself, human, what courage you must have to enter my clan's domain. Snarled the wolf as his crept closer to where Naruto lay on the ground. Ah. Please don't kill me, I can explain. Naruto exclaimed still frozen in terror. Explain you shall human, why you have intruded on my clan's lands, and you shall pay the price. The snarling wolf said as his fur began to spark. Please don't hurt me Ilkami-san. Naruto whimpered, I just want to know where I am. Surprise came over the wolf, you mean, you do not know. The wolf asked curiously. Of course not. Hiro Senen showed me a cool jutsu to summon a tote, and next thing I know, I'm here. The Jinchuriki cried hysterically. The wolf gaped in surprise, this child is to be our next summoner. The wolf thought. Child, I am not a wolf, I am part the clan favored by Rage and Sama himself, we are the clan of the Raiju. Naruto stared at the now identified Raiju, and the Raiju stared back, this staring contest continued for some time until Naruto, after gathering enough courage to reply asked Suo, where the hell am I? The Raiju was at a loss for words, before coming back to the present and responding, Gaki, you are at Raitningu, Lightning, Mountain, the home of the Raiju. Why am I here? Naruto asked. The Raiju sighed before saying my name is Hikari and now follow me Gaki, you will now speak to our elders. Some time later. Hikari, why have you brought the intruding human to me? Asked the first elder, Rimjin, as wind began to pick up around him. Rimjin Sama, this human, had tried to summon a toad, and I assume he did not sign the toad contract and was reverse summoned here said Hikari. You take us for fools Hikari there is no way a mere human is destined to summon us. Said another elder, Mteran. Hikari, you are one of our strongest and most trustworthy Raiju. Hikari called in Naruto, now tell us human, how you came to be here said Rimjin. I tried to summon toads like Hiro Sen and showed me how to, but I ended up here, Naruto said defiantly. Do you expect us to believe this, what sage would be stupid enough to have an apprentice summoned without signing the contract? Said Nteran. Hikari-san, what contract are they talking about? Asked Naruto, Naruto, to summon toads or any other another animal you have to sign a contract with the clan, allowing you to summon them said Hikari. What does that have to do with me getting back to Konoha and kicking Hiro Senen's ass for getting me here? Asked Naruto. It is safe to assume that the child has not come here on purpose, but the question is, what we do with him? Asked Bishoho. I propose we kill him. Said Nteran. Are you mad Nteran, has this child done us any wrong? Said Rimjin. Naruto is it? Shuri asked Naruto, to which Naruto nodded, well we can decide what we do with him after he elaborates more on the circumstances that led him to come here. The faces of the four elders looked at Naruto expectantly. Naruto looked at the elders before saying, well, I wanted training to become a Chunin during the Chunin exams one month away, so I found Iro Senen, and he summoned a toad. Said Naruto, I asked him to train me to do cool things like that, and after a lot of convincing he agreed to teach me, he summoned the same toad again, he called him Gama, I think said Naruto before looking at the elders. Bishoho sighed, Prasi child. Naruto nodded and continued I asked him how to summon toads and if he could show me some cool jutsu, he showed me the hand signs and then I did them and slammed my hand on the ground like I saw him do and suddenly I ended up here. Exclaimed Naruto. Now we know of the circumstances, we can do two things, send him back to Konoha through the portal to fire country or we can train him for the Chunin exams and make him our summoner, as it is obvious he is destined to be our summoner, I vote we do the second one. Said Shuri. I am willing to accept him being trained by us only if he proves he will be a fine summoner Bishoho said. Shuri nodded, that has to mandatorily done, the element test, capability test have to be done. He said. Then I am fine with it. Bishoho responded. I am fine with it as well. Said Rimjin. I say we throw him out of our home and kill him Terran said. Well, the test shall be conducted, Hikari, you will conduct these tests yourself said Shuri. 
Yes my lord. Said Hikari. Naruto, first take this paper and channel your chakra through it. Said Hikari. Naruto channeled his chakra through the paper, the paper split into fourths, and each fourth crinkled. Good Naruto, your chakra natures are wind and lightning, you have passed. Hikari and Naruto went to a training field. Naruto, you will engage with me in a tajutsu fight. Said Hikari. Okay Hikari, don't expect me to hold back. Said Naruto before charging to attack Hikari, the bout was brief lasting only 10 seconds, with Hikari rushing at Naruto and knocking him down by hitting Naruto's head with his paws. Elders, Naruto has potential, he has a strong wind and lightning affinity, perfect for us Raiju. He also has decent tajutsu for his stature, he is ready to be our summoner with some training. It is decided then, Naruto will be our newest summoner said Shuri. Chapter 2. Not so amazing training. So you're saying you guys will train me for the Chunin exams, Naruto asked excitedly. Yes Naruto, we will be training you in our scared ground within the right Ningu mountain itself, the Cave of Sparks, this cave is special, due to the powerful jutsu casted by our ancestors, time inside it passes far slower than outside of it, one day outside is 10 days within the cave said Shuri. So cool. Naruto exclaimed, what will I be learning there, cool jutsu, or your clans fighting Kata or Naruto? Do not get so excited you will have a total of 300 days inside the cavern, the first 100 of which will be spent improving you mind and body, you may have passed our exam, but it was by a small margin. Said Hikari. Hikari, I want to learn Jutsu or I won't be able to beat Sasuke and Niji team. Naruto exclaimed. See Naruto, this is what I am talking about you are not mature enough to learn our clan's techniques or any Jutsu, your reflexes are dull, and your mind not so calm, in a battle you must keep your mind free from all distractions and not be provoked easily said Hikari, I promise though at the end of your training, you will be able to go head to head with me at least. Enough. Who do you think you are brat demanding we reveal our secrets to you, we are generously offering you to become our summoner, that itself is an enormous prestige, and yet you demand more. Boom Terran. Taran, he is only a child and children may be as he is, after our training we give he will become the ideal summoner. The Shoho intoned, Hikari, his training will begin at dawn. Rumjin said. As you wish Rumjin sama Hikari replied. Hum Naruto, we will begin your training. Hikari called. Yash, let's get started. Yelled Naruto. In the cavern of sparks. Whoa, Hikari, it's so big, it's bigger than the field in the Kanoha Stadium. Naruto exclaimed. It is only a portion of the cavern Naruto, it is far larger than this, come Naruto let us head to the inner sanctum. Hikari responded as he walked deeper into the cavern. Now let's get started said Hikari as he pulled two pairs of training weights from a rack in the inner sanctum. Naruto, put these on and run 20 laps around the ground, the ideal time is 5 minutes, the total distance will be 5 kilometers, so you will need to cover 1 kilometer in a minute. Hikari, that's so fast though, I'm not even sure if Kakashi sensei can run that fast, and I have to do it while wearing weights. Naruto exclaimed. If you want to continue with the training you will run Naruto, by the end of the week I want you to be able to run at that speed, we will increase your speed from there. Hikari replied. Naruto began to run as fast as he could, he began to pick up speed and unconsciously fueling himself using his chakra to enhance his legs. Hikari nodded as Naruto finished the first 10 laps in 5 minutes, he knew that Naruto was fueling his limbs with chakra as the weights were weighing him down. What's the time Hikari? Naruto panted as he finished his final lap, Naruto, you finished in 12 minutes, more than double the ideal time, we have one week to bring up your speed. Replied Hikari. So what next Hikari? Naruto asked. You will have to improve your reflexes, follow me to another chamber. Hikari said. As soon as they came to another chamber filled with swinging logs suspended by ropes, now Naruto, go through the swinging logs without getting hit. Hikari commanded. Easy PC Naruto said as he ran towards the course and began to go through it, only to get hit by the second swinging log. Easy PC is it Naruto, Hikari chuckled. Naruto went back to the swinging logs grumbling about stupid sadistic wolves. Naruto repeated the course, this time with a little bit more success, making it to the fifth log out of the twenty, rather than the second one. Hikari struggled to restrain his laughter at seeing a disgruntled Naruto stand up after being knocked down, only to be knocked down again by the same log. Hikari, do I have to keep getting hit like this? Asked Naruto. Yes you do Naruto, getting hit encourages you to not get hit again, and it build character. Hikari responded with a straight face. Naruto turned around and took a step forward, only to get knocked down yet again, this time Hikari was unable to restrain his laughter and began to laugh uncontrollably. This routine continued for some time until Naruto finally completed the course without getting hit. Naruto, you have finally finished the course, starting from tomorrow you will go through the course twice a day until you can get through it flawlessly, after which you will start to go through it blindfolded. Naruto stared at Hikari as disbelief before shaking his head and asking so what's next. 
Bakari thought for a while before saying, well Naruto, that will be enough for today tomorrow I will start you on something new. Now you may go to sleep or continue training, it is your wish, I'm gonna go to sleep. Said Hikari. Naruto nodded and was about to go to sleep on the pad Hikari laid out on the floor before saying actually Hikari I wanna go through the course a couple more times before I sleep. Hikari nodded before going to sleep. Naruto went to the course before taking a deep breath and going through the course, the first few times he was knocked down, but he soon began to get the hang of the exercise, getting through the course untouched most of the time. After an hour of practicing Naruto decided it was enough and went to sleep with a smile on his face. The next day. Naruto wake up coaxed Hikari, what the hell Hikari, waking me up so early said Naruto before going back to sleep. Hikari sighed before smirking, Hikari pushed Naruto gently as possible under the swinging logs course, before sitting on his hind legs, waiting for Naruto to wake up. Naruto yawned before waking up and rubbing his and turning his head, only to see a log swinging at his head at high speeds, and getting knocked aside. Hikari let out a chuckle which turned into a full-blown laugh. Naruto got up with a tick mark on his head before grabbing a rock from the cavern floor and chucking it at Hikari. Hikari easily dodged it before saying chill kid it was all in good fun. Naruto glared at Hikari and sat down, what are we doing today Hikari team? Naruto asked with a smirk. Don't call me team Naruto, remember I'm the one training you Hikari chuckled. To answer your question as an addition to running and going through the log course, you will also be doing chakra control exercises in preparation for you to learn jutsu. Said Hikari before handing Naruto a leaf, I want you to cut that with your chakra, and before you start or say anything you will also be learning the cage bunch and no jutsu from this scroll to speed up your training. Said Hikari as he tossed a scroll to Naruto. Um Hikari, I already know the Cage Bunshin no Jutsu Naruto said before forming 10 Cage Bunshin. Hikari laughed, that's not the Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, you would not have nearly enough chakra to make 5 of them much less 10. Hikari said before padding up to one of the Bunshin and touching it only for his paw to hit a solid mass. Hikari's jaw dropped, holy shit this kid can already do the Cage Bunshin. He thought. But how does this speed up my training? Asked Naruto confusedly. Wait, you don't know the advantages of the cage bunshin? Hikari asked. Besides them being solid, no I don't Naruto said impatiently. The cage bunshin's memories transfer to you once it is dispelled. Naruto stared at Hikari before saying, so I can speed up my training by a thousand. Said Naruto as he created a thousand clones. At seeing the amount of chakra Naruto had, Hikari promptly fainted. Hikari, Hikari. Who in the world is calling my name Hikari thought before sitting up and seeing the thousand Narutos and fainting again. Hikari woke up from his shock-induced slumber, seeing a thousand Naruto's sitting around pushing their chakra through the leaves, Hikari shook his head as he felt unconsciousness about to take hold of him again. Alright, now Naruto let me tell you how to cut that leaf with your chakra. Said Hikari. Finally you are awake again Hikari said Naruto. Hikari nodded in confirmation before saying, Naruto, I want you to imagine your chakra as two sharp blades grinding together to form an ultra-sharp one and push it into the leaf. A thousand Naruto's tried it, and one of the Naruto's made a tiny cut on his leaf before shouting in triumph, Hikari walked up to that clone and dispelled it, oi Hikari, what the hell said Naruto before realizing what his clone had done and mimicking the results in his own leaf. This continued for an hour before Naruto was able to cut the leaf fully, though extremely slowly with his chakra. Okay now that you have done that, you're gonna go through the routine now said Hikari. The Naruto's collectively groaned before dispelling all at once causing Naruto to get a headache. Naruto groaned and fell on his back from the sudden influx of memories. Hikari went up to Naruto, Naruto you should get used to it, it happens every time you spawn that many clones and dispel them all at once, next time dispel then in groups of 10 at 30 second intervals. Naruto nodded before beginning to run around the cavern, this time Naruto finished his 20 laps in 7 minutes. Good job. That is a 5 minute decrease from last time, I guess all that obstacle course running paid off huh? Hikari said. Now I want you to take off your weight and run this time said Hikari. Naruto nodded and took off his weights and began to run only to fall to the ground due to the lack of weight on his legs. Needless to say Hikari began to laugh his ass off. You feel like that because you were not used to the lack of weight on your legs, even if it was only for a day. Naruto got up and started running again, this time without falling, he finished his laps in 4 minutes. Alright Hikari, now I don't have to do laps anymore right? exclaimed Naruto. Hikari couldn't resist to be able to burst Naruto's bubble, nope, you're gonna have to get below 5 minutes with weights. Said Hikari. Naruto looked at Hikari, you think that's really funny don't you Hikari? Asked Naruto with a deadpan. Whatever, now let's see how you are doing in the course said Hikari with a smirk. Naruto quickly flew through the course untouched. To think he could accomplish that within a day, that is truly amazing. Hikari thought. In your hairy face Hikari, I did it in a day. Shouted Naruto in triumph. 
Yeah, now we can start you on doing to course blindfolded, so you can go through the course based on your other senses besides sight as well. Hikari said. Well I'm pumped so I'm ready for anything. Said Naruto. Chapter 3. Jiraiya is in trouble. Shit, shit, shit. Saratobi sensei is gonna kill me. If he finds out I lost Minato's son Jiraiya shuddered, he didn't want to think of what would happen if his former sensei found out he had lost his surrogate grandson shuddered again. He had thought Naruto would be in the realm of the toads, after all he should be transported to the realm of his destined summons, right? But Nuo, fate had other ideas. Flashback. Jiraiya sighed, Naruto had tried to summon before he signed the contract. He summoned Fukasaku, a toad elder who appeared in a puff of smoke. Why did you summon me, Jiraiya-chan? Fukasaku asked. Hey Fukasaku, listen did any human intruder enter mt.momboku in the past hour or so? Jiraiya asked. My apprentice, Naruto, Minato's son accidentally tried the summoning jutsu without signing the contract. Fukasaku shook his head. No Jiraiya-chan, no one has entered. Minato's son you say? He may have incorrectly done it or something, did a summoning seal appear? Asked Fukasaku. Yes Fukasaku, a seal did appear, I'm sure of it. Jiraiya said. This means that Minato's son must be destined to become a summoner of another summon, goodbye Jiraiya-chan said Fukasaku as he disappeared in a puff of smoke. Jiraiya sighed, what had been a minor inconvenience had turned into a tremendous problem. Apparently Naruto had a different destined summon. Flashback end. What am I going to do? Jiraiya thought, first some research, then I can go face my doom in the hands of Sensei. He decided. An hour of peeping later. Well, time to go talk to Sensei Jiraiya said to himself, as a sense of foreboding filled the air. Jiraiya slowly walked up the stairs to the Hokage's office, with each step his courage grew weaker, and he began to fear the wrath of the god of Shinobi. Jiraiya entered the office, the Hokage's eyes looked at him before he asked. Where is Naruto-kun, Jiraiya? After those four words came out of the Hokage's mouth, an ominous aura surrounded him. Did you forget Jiraiya, that I have an all-seeing ball? Or that I would be keeping an eye on Naruto? I saw you go peeping as soon as Naruto was summoned to who knows where. Thundered the third Hokage, each word thundering down on Jiraiya's head like a hammer. Do you not care what happens to him? Sen Sensei, I forgot to make him sign the toad contract before he tried to summon a toad, and he ended up being summoned somewhere else. Jiraiya whimpered, terrified of the wrath the Hokage would bring upon him. Now Jiraiya, what are you going to do to get back Naruto? The Hokage asked. Well you see Sensei, the same thing happened to me, right? Said Jiraiya, which the third Hokage nodded. I was thinking that Naruto would come back before the Chunin exams, just like I did. Jiraiya said, unsure if he had phrased his words correctly. Jiraiya, you have two weeks to bring back Naruto to this village, or else Saratobi said, leaving the threat hanging in the air. After seeing Jiraiya nod he added. Good. The oppressive atmosphere from the third Hokage's killer intent leaving instantaneously. Now Jiraiya, we have other matters of different nature to discuss, such as the invasion Orochimaru is planning. Saratobi said. Yes Sensei, well his motives aren't clear, I'm willing to bet my money that Orochimaru is going after you to get revenge. Jiraiya responded. Yes, that is very likely. I don't think there is any other possibility besides him trying to kill me, my life is good as over at this point. The Hokage said. On hearing Jiraiya gasp, he waved his hands. Jiraiya, I will die soon and I need a successor. You will have to become Hokage if I die, there is no one else. He said. But Sensei Jiraiya started. No buts Jiraiya, unless a miracle can bring back Minato or Tsunade comes back, you are to be the next Hokage. Saratobi said. What about Kakashi then, or even you son Asuma and Guy, they are almost on the level of Asanon. Jiraiya protested. Jiraiya, Kakashi is too young, Asuma just doesn't have the qualities, and Guy they both shuddered at the thought of Guy in a spandex suit, becoming Hokage. At that moment, the door opened and in stepped Kakashi. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. Jiraiya said. Kakashi bowed before asking. Uh, Hokage-sama, do you know where Naruto is? I found Ibisu unconscious on the ground and Naruto nowhere in sight. The Hokage nodded towards the Sanin. You have Jiraiya to blame for that. He attempted to teach Naruto summoning and promptly lost him to another dimension of summoning animals after Naruto-kun tried to summon toads without signing the contract. Kakashi stared at Jiraiya and Jiraiya stared back and a staring contest ensued. Oh well, less work for me. Have fun tracking him down Jiraiya-sama. Kakashi said with an eye smile as he left the office with his nose in an orange book. Okay. On a different note, how do we prevent you from dying, Sensei? Asked Jiraiya. We don't Jiraiya the Hokage chuckled. But Sensei, you are the Hawk Jiraiya began. Jiraiya. I don't need protection, I will fight Orochimaru myself. He boomed. Sensei Jiraiya protested, but on seeing the Hokage's eyes sharpen in defiance, he conceded. We still need to place protection around the village though. 
the Hokage conceded. I will station Anbu at the gates and at the arena where the fights will take place. He said. Jiraiya nodded. We will also need guards in the civilian complex, as that complex is closest to the main gate. Jiraiya added. The Hokage nodded in agreement. I will take care of that as well. He replied. Jiraiya, will you be present in Kanoha during the invasion? The Hokage asked. Jiraiya thought for a while before nodding, I will be here monitoring Naruto. Jiraiya realized his mistake too late. What will you be doing in the meantime Jiraiya? The Hokage asked quietly, his oppressive killing intent weighing down on Jiraiya. I, I will be looking for Naruto of course he stuttered. Very well. Jiraiya, if you don't mind, could you go spy on Orochimaru's Odo bases and see if you can get any information about the invasion? The Hokage asked. I was planning on doing just that, after all I am free since I lost Naruto Jiraiya cursed at his mistake as he felt the Hokage's glare upon him before quickly covering up. Who I will be looking for as well. I will be going then, sensei. Jiraiya said as he walked out the room. The Hokage nodded before adding. Be careful Jiraiya, Orochimaru will not be forgiving if you are found out. Jiraiya nodded and exited the room. Here is in Sirotobi side, he really was getting old. Time for my hobby. The Hokage said as he pulled out his crystal ball and looked at the female side of the hot springs. Silent perverted giggles filled the room. Well, I need to get more equipment. I lost all my kunai and shuriken on that last mission. Jiraiya thought as he made his way to the merchant's district of Kanoha. Hmm, never seen that store before, let's go try it out. He thought as he made his way to the weapon shop, Higurashi's weapon shop. He entered the shop to be greeted by the sound of welcome to Higurashi's weapon, oh my gosh, you are Tsunade's teammate. The bun-haired girl blurted out. Look to what I have been reduced to, just Tsunade's teammate. Jiraiya chuckled. The bun-haired girl blushed. Um, my name is Tenten, Jiraiya-sama. What would you like? She asked. Well I would like a hundred kunai, I lost mine on a mission. Jiraiya said in response. What happened Jiraiya-sama? That is if you don't mind me asking. Tenten asked. Of course I wouldn't mind a question like that, especially if it comes from a pretty girl like you. Jiraiya winked as he saw the girl blush again. Well I lost them when I was spying on Takigakur, the rest of the information is top secret. He continued. Here are your kunai said Tenten as she handed him a hundred kunai sealed in a scroll. Thank you and goodbye then, Tenten. Said Jiraiya before he left the shop. I have just enough time for a little research before I go to Odo. Jiraiya thought as he walked towards the hot springs. He arrived and went to his peephole and activated his invisibility jutsu before looking through said peephole and noting words down in a small notepad. Hmm, should have asked Sensei if he wanted to join me here, oh well, what exquisite beauty that one looks like Naruto's teammate, Sakura, oh shit. I'm peeping on little girls. Jiraiya thought. I'm a pedophile. Yelled Jiraiya as he peeped, before realizing his mistake, oh shy he said when there was a sound from the hot springs. There is a pervert peeping. Get him. Jiraiya thought it would be wise to run for it. I just got away, damn does Naruto's teammate pack a mean punch, just like Tsunade. In fact he thought before giggling. Well, time to go to Odo. He thought as he made his way to the village gates. Some time later with Jiraiya. The guard should come back in a few minutes, I have only a small window to get into the base. Jiraiya thought as he made his way through the forest area surrounding Otagakur. Jiraiya slipped into one of the entrances above ground unnoticed and proceeded down a set of stairs. The stairs lead to a corridor dimly lit by a handful of torches mounted on the walls in a medieval fashion. Jiraiya crept across the floor and on hearing guards approaching, he quietly slipped into a room. Jiraiya gasped on seeing the dozens of people suspended in clear glass containers filled with some sort of liquid. Arachimaru's tendencies haven't changed over the years have they? Jiraiya thought grimly. He went to a cabinet and threw out the files before burning them with a quick Katen Jutsu before exiting the room. He continued across the corridor gasping as he heard a familiar voice. That voice, it's Rachimaru is it unmistakable, but what is he doing in one of his smallest bases? The only potential tactical advantage this has is that it is close to the border of high no Kuni Jiraiya's eyes widened before berating himself. Of course Rachimaru would launch his attack from somewhere close to Konoha. He quickly engaged his invisibility Jutsu before slowly entering the room. The Budo, you have already infiltrated Kanoha and successfully made Sasuke pass the first and second exams, thanks to you my plans will be able to execute it without a hitch Orochimaru said. Yes my lord, it is my duty to serve you. Responded another voice. The Budo ha, huh? pretty sure there is a Kanoha shinobi by that name in the Chunin exams, he must be a spy. Jiraiya concluded, but why does he want Sasuke? He pondered. During the second exam, I will enter as a genin and plant my curse seal on Sasuke. Orochimaru informed Caputo. Then I will have the Sharingan. On hearing this Jiraiya's eyes widened. He wants Sasuke to defect. He thought before quietly creeping out of the room. 
Iraya silently crept out of the base, only having to knock out a single Odonin, who had spotted him before sealing the body in a scroll. Sensei would want to interrogate an Odonin. Jiraiya thought as he sealed the Odonin's body. Jiraiya quickly crept out of the base before running into the forest. Intruder. An intruder has entered the village. Yelled an Odonin. Shit. Thought Jiraiya. In a few moments the place would be swarming with Odonin. Jiraiya quickly silenced the screaming Odo Shinobi with a kunai to the throat and taking out the rest of his ream with a katan. Nkakak no jutsu, fire release. Great fireball technique. But Urachimaru. On hearing the cry of intruder, Urachimaru cursed. Jiraiya. You will not enter my base today. Not knowing Jiraiya was trying to exit the village when he was spotted by an Odo guard. Shall I take care of him Urachimaru-sama? Asked the white-haired shinobi, emerging from the shadows to appear at Urachimaru's side. Urachimaru sighed before saying. Yes Kamimro, please do so. He responded. Kamimro nodded before asking. Shall I take the sound four with me? Urachimaru thought for a while before saying. No Kamimro, you shall go alone. Kamimro nodded again before running out of the room. Kamimro was a valuable tool, but he has outlived his usefulness, he is no longer suited to be my container. Hopefully he takes some of Jiraiya with him, perhaps an arm or leg he thought as he watched Kamimro exit the room. With Jiraiya. Jiraiya had encountered several other groups which he quickly took out, each encounter lasting slightly more time than the last. He's soon meeting a white-haired ninja. Jiraiya of Sanin, you will not escape a Togaker today. Said the shinobi before pulling out a bone from one of his arms. I am Kamimro, one of Arachimaru-sama's elite ninja. Jiraiya cringed as he saw the now named Kamimro pull out the bone from one of his arms. Jiraiya slid into his fighting stance, already knowing it would not be an easy battle before smirking. The Mimro immediately rushed at him, dance of the camellia. He said as he vanished. He reappeared behind Jiraiya starting a vertical slash, Jiraiya blocked with the gauntlets on his arms, which shattered under the impact of Kamimro bone sword. Jiraiya jumped away from Kamimro before flashing though the seals for a summoning jutsu and summoning Gama with a cry of Kuchius no jutsu. Gama he is the opponent. Be careful, one of his blows was strong enough to shatter one of my gauntlets. He said as he and Gama ran at Kamimro. The Mimro started rapidly slashing each of his slashes being blocked by Gama, by use of his gauntlets. Kamimro suddenly vanished leaving an after image where he had been before, he reappeared behind Gama, with his eyes closed and his sword in the position of a completed slash. Gama's gauntlets shattered. I'm sorry Jiraiya, I wasn't much help. Gama said as he dispelled in a puff of smoke. Jiraiya stared at his opponent grimly. He has to be killed, there is no capturing him. He thought as he created a cage bunshin, Katen. Gameu Enden, fire release. Toad oil flame bullet. He yelled as he spewed oil from his mouth and his clone, letting out an inferno of fire from its mouth. The oil splashed on Kamimro before being ignited by fire, effectively burning him. The Jiraiya surprise Kamimro came out of the inferno relatively unscathed. Jiraiya cursed, he would have to bring out another summon. Kuchius no jutsu. He said for the second time that day. The boss Toad Gamabunta appeared. Why have you summoned me Jiraiya? He thundered. We don't have time Bunta, we have a fight. Gamma Bunta nodded before pulling out his tanto and slashing at Kamimro. Kamimro gracefully dodged before activating his cursed seal. I will beat you with the power of Arachimaru-sama himself. He said as black markings crept over his skin. Gamma Bunta, now. Yelled Jiraiya as they launched a collaboration technique. Katen. Gameu Enden. Yelled Jiraiya as he spewed a large torrent of tote oil and Gamma Bunta let loose an enormous inferno engulfing Kamimro. Before Kamimro could recover, Jiraiya launched another jutsu. Doten. Yomi Numa, Earth Release. Swamp of Underworld. He yelled. Kamimro began to sink into the deep swamp created by Jiraiya's jutsu before he was engulfed fully. Jiraiya let out a sigh of relief at defeating Kamimro. Thank you, Gamma Bunta Jiraiya said. On seeing him nod, Jiraiya dispelled the toad in a puff of smoke. Jiraiya began to walk away. I have to use it now. Thought Kamimro as he activates stage 2 of the cursed seal. Arg. Yelled Kamimro as he broke through the hardened surface of the swamp in the second stage of Cursed Seal, before coughing up blood and running at Jiraiya. Jiraiya turned around in surprise. Seeing a transformed Kamimro running at him he let loose a Kabari Senban, shooting hair needles at Kamimro. Dance of the Clematis. Vine. Yelled Kamimro before pulling out his spinal cord and using it to bind Jiraiya. Jiraiya's eyes widened. That kid pulled out his spine. He thought before executing a Hari Jizo, Needle Jizo, using it to surround his body to protect it from Kamimro's attack. The Mimro's vine went around Jiraiya's Hari Jizo. Dance of Clematis. Flower. Said Kamimro as he encased his hand with an indestructible bone drill. He rushed at Jiraiya, yelling as he plunged his hand into Jiraiya's defense. 
Jiraiya quickly released his Hari Jizo, immediately sending a Ranjushigami no Jutsu, Wild Lion main technique, a Kamimro, Kamimro thrust his bone drill at the attack. Jiraiya gritted his teeth holding up the Jutsu, Kamimro's eyes widened as he saw his bone drill reduced to dust before coughing up blood. At the momentary opportunity, Jiraiya used Doten. Yomi Numa. Kamimro, still coughing began to sink into the swamp of Jiraiya's Jutsu. He soon was completely engulfed in the swamp. If I am to die, I will take him with me. Thought Kamimro before using Dance of the Seedling Fern. Jiraiya on seeing elongated bones rapidly erupt from his swamp, jumped back landing a safe distance away. I am sorry Arachimaru sama I was unable to complete the mission you assigned me. Thought Kamimro before he breathed his last. Jiraiya sighed, he had been almost fully out of chakra when he used his wild lion main technique and after his doten. Yomi Numa. Now he had been running on fumes. Jiraiya sighed before falling on his back recounting the battle. But Arachimaru. I see, Kamimro has fallen. Unfortunately he has not taken any of Jiraiya with him. He thought as he frowned distastefully at the thought. A call of Arachimaru-sama brought Arachimaru out of his thoughts. What is it? He hissed. The Odo Shinobi slightly backed away at the glared Arachimaru sent at him. I was wondering if you want to send Shinobi after Jiraiya, he is still within Odo territory. The guard asked. No, no, no other ninja in this village with the exception of myself are capable of facing Jiraiya, even in his weakened state. After all he won't approach the base anytime soon at his current strength after facing Kamimro. Said Arachimaru. The shinobi nodded before walking out of the room. Arachimaru didn't know how wrong he was about Jiraiya not entering the village. But Jiraiya. Jiraiya sighed, to almost be taken out by one of Arachimaru's underlings, he was losing his touch. Well time to head back to Kanoha he thought as he began to tree hop his way back to the village. Chapter 4. I am not the Nadame Hokage. In the Cavern of Sparks. Naruto was working on his leaf cutting exercise while being monitored by Hikari. He had been working on it for 10 full days in the cavern, but has still not reached the point where Hikari considered him proficient. In his physical training though, he had been growing in leaps and bounds, he gone past the desired 5 seconds per lap and could now lap the chamber in less than 5 seconds with weights. His reflexes had grown faster, now he was able to last longer than 10 minutes against Hikari, still not beating him, but a far cry from his 10 second pounding he got when they first fought. It had been 250 hard days of training, but strangely he had enjoyed it, it was nothing like the training he had done under Kakashi. He woke up every day thinking of what he was going to do to get stronger, how much he had progressed, and how would he do against Hikari. He had long since ditched the orange eyesore that was his ninja uniform, it had grown battered and torn from his and Hikari's fights, and his trips through the obstacle course, now he wore the only things the Raiju had that humans were able to wear, a black shirt and a pair of black pants to go with it. He also wore a dark green trench he had taken a liking to, thinking it made his look powerful and cool. Hikari, on seeing Naruto space out, sighed and smacked Naruto's head with his paw. Ouch. Yelled Naruto, what was that for? Naruto, you shouldn't do your chakra control exercises while spacing out like that Hikari responded. I've been doing the same exercise for more than a hundred days Hikari, can you give me a new one? Naruto said in frustration. Very well, you have gotten it well enough, I suppose we can start on the next exercise. Hikari said while smirking. Finally. Naruto said in relief, so what is the next exercise? You are going to cut a waterfall with your chakra. Hikari said on the verge of laughter. Naruto's mind went blank, what do you mean cut a waterfall with my chakra? I'm not the goddamn Nidam Hokage. Well I don't know about any Nidam Hokage, but that is your exercise. Hikari said while stifling his laughter at Naruto's reaction. Not being able to hold back he started laughing at Naruto's expense. Well at least tell me how to do it. Naruto said in indignation. Hikari stopped laughing, the principle is the same, and your chakra just has to be denser and sharper, now come to the chamber with the waterfalls now. Hikari said as he led Naruto to another chamber in the large cavern. On reaching the cavern, Naruto stood in awe at the many waterfalls present. There had to be at least 20. Naruto, you will be sending 2-4 to four clones per waterfall, depending on the size of one, you will then begin the exercise. Said Hikari. Naruto nodded as he began creating a hundred clones and sent them to the waterfalls in groups of two to four as Hikari told him to. The clones began the exercise and were met with initial success, most of them managed to cut a small groove in the waterfall for less than a second. Naruto was soon frustrated with his lack of progress after being unsuccessful for the first several days. Naruto continued to make negligible progress for the next two weeks until Hikari picked out why Naruto was having so much trouble. It's a rookie mistake really, you are keeping the chakra being expelled from you dense and sharp, but the chakra you have already expelled is not being kept sharp and dense by you. Hikari said. 
Naruto stared at Hikari and shook his head before trying to cut the waterfall again, but this time following the instructions that Hikari had given him. Naruto's ire at his lack of success disappeared as he deepened the groove considerably, the progress he had made in the past five minutes had been greater than the progress he had made in the past several days. From then on Naruto improved in his exercise in leaps and bounds, mastering it within a week exactly on the 200th day. Alright. Naruto said as he pumped his fist, now I can learn some wind jutsu. As he happily ran around the chamber. Hikari watched Naruto bouncing around the chamber in joy at completing the stage. Hikari sighed, he would have to break him out of his joy-induced stupor. Hikari slowly padded up to Naruto before raising his paw and knocking Naruto on the head. Naruto fell to the ground and heatedly glared at Hikari and began to say something only for Hikari to decisively cut him off, thus avoiding a long painful argument sure to follow. Hikari shook his head, no Naruto, you will not be learning any wind jutsu yet, you must first complete the two stages of lightning manipulation. Naruto froze, his joy suddenly turning into indignation, what do you mean I have to lean lightning manipulation, some good wind jutsu will be enough to beat Sasu team and Niji team. Naruto said as he stomped his foot on the ground. Naruto. You are not a child Hikari began. Then why Naruto started only to be cut off by Hikari yet again. Hikari sighed, this is not about you beating Sasuke and Niji, and this is about impressing the elders. Said Hikari. Why do I have to do that? Naruto yelled, I don't care what those stupid elders think. Naruto. Hikari said sharply in a voice filled with rage, you will not insult the elders after they so kindly granted you the extreme privilege to be our summoner. After Hikari calmed significantly, he continued, as to why you must impress the elders. Flashback. Hikari, our new summoner is raw, he is not yet fit to be deemed our summoner, so therefore we will hold off on him signing the contract. Said the leader of the elders, Shuri. Yes, my lord, I understand. Hikari responded respectfully. Now, now, Shuri, don't tell me you have grown soft over the years. So if he is not on the required level will you just let him go? Asked Nteran. Nteran san is correct, Shuri-sama, if the child fails we must erase his memories of this place. Said Bishoho. TSK, TSK Bishoho, that is not what I mean, Nteran chuckled, I mean according to the decree of otsutsuki sama our first summoner, in order to maintain the balance we must kill him, if he fails to stand up to our expectations, said Nteran. Nodran. That is not the meaning of the decree, it is only if the summoner has already signed the contract and is proven to be unwilling or unable to protect those who have bonds with him or being unable to stand on par with one of the boss summons within a year after signing the contract. Roared Ramjin who was unwilling to see the words of their precious first summoner being twisted as such. Now Ramjin san, the decree can be interpreted in many ways, you can also take it, as the one who sets foot in as well can apply. Nteran calmly replied. But you cannot prove that he is unable or unwilling to protect those who have bonds with him. Shuri said calmly with a shrewd glint in his eye. Nteran chuckled, but who is to say he can beat the boss summons in combat with a year after setting foot in these lands, by the time he leaves one month will be over, and unless he can do both wind and lightning jutsu, it is impossible for him to win. Nteran replied with a sadistic smile. Very well Nteran said Shuri. Shuri sama. Hikari. Began to protest. Hikari, you know we cannot go against the decree said Shuri, on seeing Hikari about to respond in kind he cut him off saying, now Hikari, that is my word, and my word is law. Hikari's protest died in his mouth, he glowered at Nteran and bowed his head, showing that he was willing to abide by the decree before padding out of the chamber. Flashback end. Naruto stood, his mouth gaped open. Now you see why you must. Sighed Hikari clearly angry at the elder Nteran, now let's get started Naruto, maybe you'll have better luck with these exercises than your wind ones. Hikari joked in an attempt to lighten the mood. Naruto slowly nodded, still in shock of what he had heard and let himself be led by Hikari into another chamber in the cavern. On arriving, Hikari sat on his hind legs and held his paws apart and channeled lightning chakra into them, causing electricity to spark in between his paws. That is your second exercise, you must first learn to crumple a leaf with your chakra, this time you may use your clones, said Hikari as he stopped channeling lightning chakra and handed Naruto a leaf. Naruto shook his head to clear himself of his shock at his new revelation, now more determined to finish the exercise. He took the leaf and channeled plain chakra into it, in hopes of accomplish something only for nothing to happen. Naruto then attempted to convert his chakra into lightning chakra, but since he didn't know how to he failed. He then looked up at Hikari for help to which Hikari smiled and said, you must spin your chakra densely to produce lightning chakra. Naruto nodded and grit his teeth as he began to weakly spin his chakra, he soon noticed a slight crumpling near where his fingertips were on the leaf. He grinned at Hikari and said, look Hikari, I guess I don't need clones, I am already doing it. 
Ikari took a closer look and deadpanned at Naruto, you were holding the leaf so tightly you crumpled the leaf. Naruto grumbled and created a hundred clones before all of the clones began the exercise. After a few hours one clone cried, yada, I did it. Ikari went up to the clone and examined the leaf which was partially crumpled and nodded his approval after closely examining it. Naruto dispelled the clone and received the knowledge on how the clone accomplished the feat. He nodded in understanding as well as the remaining 99 clones, and most were soon met with success. Ikari stood in surprise and asked, what did that clone do differently? He asked in curiosity. He densely spun his chakra. Naruto replied while still engrossed in the exercise. You do realize I told you to do that in the beginning right? Hikari deadpanned with a tinge of anger in his voice. Naruto chuckled nervously and continued his exercise. By the end of the day Naruto managed to slightly crumple the entire leaf, by the end of the week he crumpled the leaf fully. After an additional few days, exceeding the time he had taken for the wind exercise by two, he finally completed the exercise, allowing Hikari to finally allow him to move on to stage two of the exercise. Hikari even added an incentive, if he could finish the exercise in less time he had than for the wind exercise, he would give him two scrolls, each detailing an A-rank jutsu for each element, as well as teaching him the basic jutsu for each element. Naruto soon began the second exercise, which was not only frustrating but very painful to say in the least, as when he failed to arc the electricity it would shock him. After 50% of his time he spent in mastering the wind exercise, he managed to hold an arc of electricity between his two index fingers when they were an inch apart. So am I done Naruto asked hopefully. No Naruto, the arc is too small I want you to create an arc when your fingers are at least a foot apart. Replied Hikari as he shook his head. Naruto sighed in frustration and went back to work, finally after a week when 80% of the time he spent on the wind exercise was over, Hikari decided to give him a hint that Naruto was supposed to figure out on his own. Naruto, you can control the electricity, you just have to direct it between the point of origination and the point of ending. Said Hikari. Eh? Said Naruto clearly not understanding what Hikari had said. Hikari sighed, listen, I'm going to explain this very simply Hikari said, you have to have one fingertip be the opposite charge, and the other be the negative charge. Hikari said slowly, on seeing Naruto not understand, he sighed at having to explain the exercise like he would to a complete idiot. You spin your chakra one way to make a normal thingy for one hand, and spin your chakra the other way to make an opposite thingy, and since opposite thingies attract, electricity will come between them said Hikari. Oh said Naruto while nodding his head in understanding before widening the gap between his fingers by two more inches. Hikari shook his head and said, Baka under his breath. Within a week exactly a day more than he took for his wind exercise, he completed it on the 225th day. Mo Hikari, can I please still have the jutsu scrolls Naruto pleaded to an unrelenting Hikari for the umpteenth time before finally relenting after an hour of continuous pleading. Hikari padded out of the chamber reappearing a minute later with the scrolls in his mouth and dropped them at Naruto's feet. On seeing Naruto eagerly about to open the scrolls, nope, you can learn them later you must first learn the basic jutsu of lightning and wind, Raiden. Raiku Henge and Futen. Rapusho both C-rank jutsu. We will be skipping the D-rank jutsu as they tend to be useless at Hikari. You will first be learning Futen. Rapusho, it is a useful jutsu, it can be used to push away incoming kunai and shuriken, as well as boosting your own. Not only that you can use it to push your enemies back away from you. Hikari said as he chuckled at seeing Naruto drool on hearing the applications for the jutsu, the Raiden. Raiku Henge allows you to transform into a bolt of lightning which can travel in any direction, it is a very good jutsu for evasion and can be used to surprise you opponent, said Hikari as he used the jutsu, becoming a bolt and striking the ground in front of Naruto and becoming a Raiju again. Wow. Hikari, when can I learn those jutsu Naruto asked eagerly. You will be starting right now Hikari chuckled. Yada. I'm gonna learn a new jutsu, I'm gonna learn a new jutsu he sang. Hikari sat on his hind legs and watched Naruto before calling out, Naruto if you don't come now I won't teach you the jutsu. On hearing the call Naruto rushed to stand in front of Hikari. Now I want you to move a few meters back and throw some kunai at me, said Hikari as he raised his frontal paws, said Hikari to Naruto. In his excitement Naruto bounded back around 15 meters and threw his kunai with good accuracy at Hikari. Hikari channeled wind chakra to his extended paws and clapped them once before extending them and whispered Futen. Rapusho as he forcibly expelled the chakra from his hands, causing a gust of wind to pick up and push the shuriken back at Naruto. Naruto yelped as the kunai he had thrown rushed back at him and quickly dodged the incoming weapons. What the hell Hikari? You cold a killed me yelled Naruto. Hikari chuckled at Naruto's outburst and said, Naruto if you had died then all your previous training was useless said Hikari, now do you see what the jutsu can do Naruto? asked Hikari. 
Hi said Naruto, now can you tell me how to do the jutsu and how come you didn't do any hand seals? Asked Naruto. The only hand seal was the clapping of my hands I did when I gathered the chakra for the jutsu, besides that there are no hand seals at Hikari, you have to gather wind chakra in both of your hands, and on clapping your hands together, quickly expel all the chakra, the chakra from both hands will clash and push outward, causing it to have a 360 degree effect. So you can use it when surrounded as well. Now do you understand? Asked Hikari, on seeing Naruto nod, now I want you to try the jutsu said Hikari, you will not be utilizing your training as this forms just a gust of wind, a blunt force said Hikari. Naruto nodded and began to gather dense wind chakra in his palms and clapped his hands while expelling the built up wind chakra, creating a powerful gust of air and actually pushed Hikari back a few feet, despite him using his claws in attempt to hold himself in place. Hikari stood straight surprised, Naruto had successfully done the jutsu with no problem whatsoever. Hikari's mouth fell open at the potential implications of what Naruto had just done. Naruto took one look at Hikari and burst out laughing, Hi Hikari, you should see the look on your face. Naruto said through his laughter. Hikari promptly closed his mouth and smirked in Naruto, Well done Naruto, let's see if you can get the next jutsu down just as fast said Hikari, still in shock of how quickly Naruto had mastered the jutsu, he probably became proficient in handling wind chakra, due to the amount of time he had spent on doing the wind chakra control exercises previously thought Hikari, but then again. The jutsu didn't have much in common with the exercise, so he may just be a genius at performing jutsu. Naruto, to do the Raikou Henge, you must circulate lightning chakra through your body and do the hand seals said Hikari. But Hikari I didn't see you do any hand seals. Naruto exclaimed. Naruto, do you think I can do normal hand seals with theses? Asked Hikari as he held up his paws, most Raiju can do either Fuyutan or Raiden Jutsu sealessly, I can do Raiden Jutsu as such, if you remember Elder Renjin, he can do Fuyutan Jutsu sealessly responded Hikari. Naruto nodded in understanding, so what are the hand seals? He asked. The hand seals are boar and tiger said Hikari. So can I do the jutsu? Asked Naruto. If you think it is a good idea said Hikari while hiding a smirk. Without thinking at the implications of what Hikari had said he began to perform the jutsu. Naruto channeled lightning chakra throughout his body and flashed through the two seals while looking at the ground a meter away. To Naruto's annoyance and Hikari's delight he immediately reappeared where he had been looking at, except he was upside down with his legs in the air and touching the ground. Hikari. You didn't say anything about where or how I would transform back. Screamed Naruto in anger. Hikari backed away, well you didn't ask Hikari chuckled. Naruto grumbled about stupid wolves with sadistic tendencies before asking, how would I do it correctly? Hikari chuckled, you probably noticed that you end up where you had been looking at when you performed the jutsu and about you landing upside down, let's just say you should learn how to land on your feet, said Hikari as he howled in laughter. Hi Karai. If you don't tell me how to do that jutsu Naruto let the threat hang in the air. Okay, okay, calm down, I tell you, you circulated your chakra to the right, causing you to become the bolt from head to foot, if you change the direction of circulation you will become a bolt from foot to head, that way you will land on your feet, rather than on your head chuckled Hikari. Naruto nodded though not fully understanding what Hikari had said and tried the jutsu again, this time aiming at the ground behind Hikari, and reappeared with success. Hikari is it possible for me to change direction while I'm doing the jutsu? He asked. That's the downside of the jutsu, you can't change your direction said Hikari. Naruto nodded, so what next Hikari? Asked Naruto. Hikari shook his head, just because you were able to perform the jutsu doesn't mean you have mastered it, so I want you to keep practicing the jutsu until you reach some level of proficiency until midnight. Oh yeah and no shadow clone said Hikari. Naruto nodded and began practicing the jutsu until past midnight, until Hikari told him to rest and that tomorrow was an important day. Why is tomorrow so major? Asked Naruto as he rubbed his eyes out of slight fatigue. Hikari sighed in sadness, tomorrow is the day you head back to Konoha, you have completed your training earlier than expected, and you must meet the boss summons before you leave said Hikari, while slightly dipping his head, he was going to miss Naruto. Naruto froze at the new, he had grown attached to Hikari and didn't really want to leave, or did he necessarily want to stay as he wanted to see his friends again. Naruto nodded and went to sleep. Hikari padded out of the chamber and tried to go to sleep. Naruto awoke the next day and saw Hikari already awake, Naruto, it is time to go said Hikari. Naruto nodded and followed Hikari out of the cavern of sparks and into the open area of right Ningu. Naruto sighed and followed Hikari, we are almost near the area of the boss summon said Hikari. They soon heard the howls of a large animal or in Naruto's case, a large summon. Naruto and Hikari entered cave and soon saw three large raiju sitting around a fire, more of a bonfire and talking. Though if it isn't our new summoner. My name is Maidowin, bellowed one of the three large raiju. 
Maidawin, why do you speak to such a weakling as an equal? Said another. The now named Maidawin laughed, well he is, if he is to be our summoner, Teresi, I don't expect you to see him as an equal, you are the strongest of us ride you after all, and your ego is large laughed Maidawin. The now named Teresi grumbled. Well Maidawin, if you see him as an equal, you can be his main boss summon said the third. Well I am fine with it, as long as my friend Hikari approves of him, Hiken. Maidawin said. Naruto will make a fine summoner said Hikari. Then it is fine with me. Said Maidawin, what is wrong young one you haven't spoken at all. Um said Naruto still in awe of being accepted by Maidawin so fast. Maidawin laughed, well, you should put around two thirds of your chakra to summon me. Said Maidawin. Hikari shook his head, two thirds of Naruto's chakra is more than enough to summon all three of you, he can create over 1000 shadow clones. Said Hikari. Silence reigned over the group, well I guess you should put in enough chakra to form around 250 of your shadow clones with me in mind. Said Maidawin unperturbed by the news. Well Maidawin, Teriyasi, Hiken, we will be taking our leave, Naruto is to return to his home today, he has completed his training. Said Hikari. Maidawin nodded and Hikari and Naruto left. At the council chamber. Hikari, how has he done? Asked Shuri. He has done splendidly, he has completed his training on time, along with one basic jutsu of wind and lightning. Said Hikari. That is impressive said Bishoho. It is still to be seen if he will be a good summoner, said Nteran defiantly. He is currently accepted said Rimjin as Shuri rolled the summoning contract out to Naruto. Add a handprint and sign the contract in the first empty slot with your blood. Said Hikari. Naruto bit his thumb and did as instructed. But said Rimjin, now you may go home young summoner. Said Rimjin. By your leave Shuri-sama said Hikari. On seeing Shuri nod he left the chamber and lead Naruto to the clearly unused portal to the real world, you must imagine your surroundings and enter the portal to go back to your home said Hikari. Naruto nodded and held hid face away from Hikari, not willing for Hikari to see his tears and entered the portal, bye, Hikari, he said before he disappeared into the portal. But bye Naruto sighed Hikari. Naruto's training is over, I would like to remind you that Naruto will not be overpowered, he will not be able to win against Kakashi or even Gara without assistance. Favorite, follow, review, especially review. Chapter 5. Back home. Ah. Said Naruto as he materialized in Konoha. All was well, it was a beautiful day, the flowers were in bloom, the sun shining bright, the animals peaceful, except for the small fact that Naruto had materialized in Konoha, just a hundred meters above the tallest building hence the screaming. I'll get you for this Hikari. Damn you to hell. Yelled Naruto at the top of his lungs, before seeing that if he fell the way he was he would land on a very pointy rod. Naruto gulped before saying, that is if I survive. In Ritningu Mountain. I probably should have told Naruto that since we don't have an exact location, I would probably materialize him pretty far off from his destination, after all Naruto does have a low attention span, well hindsight is 20 20 thought Hikari as he padded towards his cave dwelling. Back with Naruto. Naruto closed his eyes and extended his arms, silently preparing for his death, before remembering one of his new jutsu. On seeing the quickly approaching needle-like extension of the Hokage Tower, he quickly flashed through some hand seals with his eyes on the window ledge of the Hokage Tower and yelled, Raiden. Raiku Henge no Jutsu. Naruto temporarily transformed into a bolt of lightning and rematerialized on the window ledge of the Hokage Tower, which happened to be the Hokage's office. He was greeted with a kunai pressing against the base of his skull by an anbu with a bird mask. Naruto. Asked Jiraiya who was present in the office with the Hokage giving a report on his latest mission. Yeah it's me, I'm back Naruto said as he glared at Jiraiya. Why the heck are you looking at me like that? Yelled Jiraiya. Yeah, thanks to you Iro Senen, I went to a distant mountain far from Kanoha with only murderous beasts for company for an entire month. Exaggerated Naruto while the Anbu who had been holding the knife backed away into the shadows. The SSHT, the place was probably a plain of green grass with talking bunnies. Snorted Jiraiya. Well I did get a cool summon said Naruto, while well, he slyly looked at Jiraiya to see his reaction. As if, you Jiraiya began. Jiraiya that is enough said here is in Saratobi, the third Hokage, giving Jiraiya a subtle glare. On seeing Jiraiya get cowed so fast Naruto couldn't resist a comment, yeah Iro Senen listen to the old man. Said Naruto with a smirk. That goes for you as well Naruto said the Hokage. Naruto ceased to speak as well. Now Naruto, as much as Jiraiya and I would like to hear of your exploits over this past month, I suggest you wait outside, I and Jiraiya are discussing a matter of large concern. Naruto nodded, not wanting to risk the Hokage's wrath, and left the room. Ten minutes later. The door to the Hokage's office opened and Jiraiya stepped out, the old man says you can come in, Jiraiya said to Naruto. Naruto nodded and followed Jiraiya into the Hokage's office. Well Naruto-kun, what have you been doing over the past month? Asked the Hokage. 
On seeing Jiraiya opening his mouth the Hokage leaked out some killing intent towards him, causing Jiraiya to promptly shut his mouth with an audible clop. Well I went to a really really tall mountain called Raitaningu. Naruto responded with no small measure of pride. Rai Raitaningu you? Stuttered Jiraiya while the Hokage's eyes clearly shone with surprise and disbelief. Anbu, you are dismissed said the Hokage, after the Anbu dispersed, Naruto, do you know what summon dwells there? The Hokage asked curiously. Yeah. The Raiju, not only that, but after one of them trained me I became their newest summoner. Said Naruto with a smirk. Jiraiya stared at Naruto with his mouth agape, while the Hokage stared at Naruto with a similar expression. Wow Naruto, just wow Jiraiya began, I'm surprised you would think we would believe that said Jiraiya with a smirk. I'm not lying. Yelled Naruto while stomping his foot, heck, how would I even know what the place is called without going there? Jiraiya, though it may be hard to believe, I'm sure Naruto can prove it to use by summoning one of the Raiju, right Naruto? Asked the Hokage while staring at Naruto questioningly. Naruto sighed and went through the seals for the summoning jutsu and put in a small portion of his reserves, the summoning seal appeared along with a plume of smoke. As the smoke dispersed a silhouette vaguely resembling a wolf became visible, a brief gust of wit originating from the silhouette blew aside the smoke, revealing a small wolf with its hackles raised. The figure had glistening silver fur and yellow eyes, which shone with an intent to maim or kill. The figure slightly calmed down on seeing Naruto. Summoner? Why have you brought me here, it does not seem like a scene of a fight. Snarled the Raiju as it glared at Jiraiya and Hiruzen. I apologize for disturbing you paused Naruto. Hiriku supplied the Raiju. Right, I apologize for summoning you here, but my village leader was suspicious of my whereabouts over the last month, responded Naruto, in an attempt to be as respectful as possible as Hikari had instructed him to be when dealing with summons he had recently met. The Raiju, now named Kariku, visibly calmed. As it was under the orders of your leader you shall be pardoned, but do not summon us needlessly, the summoning of Raiju are not for such menial things said Kariku. Naruto nodded his head as the Raiju dispelled in a plume of smoke. Now do you believe me? Asked Naruto. The Hokage and Jiraiya were still visibly in awe at the sight of the legendary beast. Jiraiya shook his head to clear it of his stupor. Now that we have seen it, I suppose we can believe you Naruto said Jiraiya, while the Hokage nodded in agreement. You should have believed me from the beginning grumbled Naruto. The Raiju matter aside, what have you been doing over the past month besides your frolicking with the Raiju, Naruto-kun? Asked the Hokage with a twinkle of mirth appearing in his eye. Frolicking? What I did was the opposite of that for the first day there said Naruto, I was listening to them discuss whether or not they would kill me. Jiraiya stared visibly in shock, he had thought on appearing in their realm, the Raiju would automatically accept Naruto as their summoner, as the toads had done for him. Well as alarming as that sounds I would like to know what you did besides your dealings with the Raiju, I hope you had trained up so you can put on a decent show in the Chunin exams, said the Hokage. The old man. I trained loads. I learned some cool jutsu and got lots faster, said Naruto. Well as good as that is, what jutsu could you have learned during your short tenure in their realm, asked Jiraiya curious about what his wayward student had accomplished over the month. Now Iro Senen that is a secret. You can see that with everyone else during the exams said Naruto mischievously. Jiraiya sighed, he had expected his student's answer to be as such, after all he would have done the same. The Hokage nodded thoughtfully, Naruto, I suggest you use this day to get reacquainted with your friends, I'm sure many of them were worried about you, but don't tell them about where you have been over the month, if you want just tell them you were training he said warningly. Naruto nodded and turned to leave, but stopped when he heard Jiraiya's voice, by the way Gaki, I like the new threads, said Jiraiya with a smirk. Naruto smiled and nodded before exiting the Hokage's office. I wonder what the Gaki learnt over the month said Jiraiya thoughtfully to Hiruzen who nodded as well. Back with Naruto. Yada, now that I'm back I have to go to the Achiricus for some Raymond, said Naruto as the salivated at the thought of Raymond. He continued on his path to the Raymond stall, blissfully ignoring the stares of the passers-by. He soon reached the stall in a few minutes and flopped down on a stool before yelling, Tuchi Ajison. Gim 30 bowls of Maizo Raymond, I haven't had any for a month. Said Naruto. Oh Naruto. I see you're back with new clothes nonetheless, where have you been all these days, I have missed my number one customer for so long. Said Tuchi. And tell you where I was old man, it's top secret said Naruto with a grin as he began to drum his fingers on the counter. And you tell even us? Asked A.M. with a pout who walked out from the back of the stall on hearing Naruto's voice. No can do A.M. Nichin. Is my ramen ready? Asked Naruto with impatience. Here it is Naruto your first bowl. Said A.M. as she set down a bowl of ramen in front of Naruto. Naruto happily dug into the bowl. In half an hour going at a stupendous speed of half a bowl per minute while on his fifteenth bowl a ninja with a green tune and vest sat next to him. Naruto. Where have you been? Asked Iruka. Naruto smiled at his sensei before saying, it's top secret. 
Yer yer, can't you even tell me? Asked Aruka. He wouldn't even tell us. Said Tuchi. If you say so said Aruka, so did you train up for the exams Naruto? Yeah. I'm gonna kick Niji team's ass. Said Naruto. Aruka chuckled, I'd like two bowls of Maizo Raymond please said Aruka to AM. Humming right up. Said AM from the back of the stall. In a few minutes AM came up and set down two bowls in front of Aruka, who pushed one of the bowls to Naruto. Naruto nodded his thanks and quickly consumed the contents of the bowl, before going on to the next one that AM just set in front of him. After a few minutes Aruka said, I'll be off now pushing up his now empty bowl, and walking off, bye Naruto, can't wait to see what you have in mind tomorrow. Bye Aruka sensei said Naruto. After another few minutes Naruto finally finished his ramen and placed down some ryo on the counter, only for them to be quickly swept up by AM with a wink. Come back anytime Naruto. Said Tuchi. Naruto nodded and ran off to find Sakura and Sasuke. He ran towards training ground 7 to see Sakura sitting down on a rock, on seeing Naruto, Sakura visibly brightened up. Hey Naruto. Where have you been? Nice clothes by the way. Shot off Sakura. Thanks for the compliment Sakura said Naruto as he took a seat on a tree stump a meter from Sakura's rock. Sakura stared at Naruto impatiently, what? said Naruto on seeing Sakura stare at him. Answer the question Naruto. said Sakura. Oh yeah, forgot chuckled Naruto, I was Sakura unconsciously leaned in due to the suspense, can't tell you it's top secret. Ended Naruto with a laugh. A tick mark formed on Sakura's forehead, Baka. Yelled Sakura as she swung her fist down on Naruto's head. Naruto saw the incoming fist and quickly created a clone and substituted with it, the clone dispelling in a puff of smoke. Geez Sakura. Said Naruto, the Hokage told me not to tell anyone. Sure said Sakura disbelievingly. I'm not joking. Said Naruto while stomping his foot. Sakura decided to temporarily leave the matter aside, did you train? Asked Sakura. Of course. I'm gonna beat Niji and Sasuke team. Yelled Naruto. Sakura fought down her urge to punch Naruto again, as if you could beat Sasuke said Sakura with a smirk. Naruto huffed, well you will see soon anyway responded Naruto as he got up, see you tomorrow Sakura, do you know where Sasuke is? Asked Naruto. Nope. Responded Sakura, bye. She said as Naruto walked away. Naruto walked by the hot springs and saw a familiar person crouch down in front of a peephole, giggling and noting things down in his notebook. Naruto smiled mischievously before yelling, it's a pervert peeping. Hiraya turned around and saw Naruto, on hearing the furious screams of the women in the hot springs calling for blood, he gave Naruto the finger and ran into the woods, followed by several women in towels rushing after him in hot pursuit. Naruto followed the mob of women into a clearing where the group together and started beating the object in between all of them. After a few minutes the women walked away leaving a figure laying down with blood splattered all over him. Naruto walked over to the now bloody Jiraiya and said, Hi Iro Senen. Hiraya glared at Naruto before pulling out a napkin and wiping his face to clear the blood. What the hell Gaki, I was getting a first class view before you had to come ruin it. He yelled. Serves you right Iro Senen. Naruto chirped cheerfully, by the way, do you know where Kakashi is? Uh, I'm pretty sure he up in the mountains near the Hokage monument training the Ichiha responded Jiraiya. Thanks, Iro Senen. Yelled Naruto as he bounded away toward the Hokage monument about half a kilometer away, leaving Jiraiya behind. Naruto ran up the side of the mountain using chakra and soon heard some cursing and the sound of rocks exploding. Naruto slowing walked up the rest of the way before hiding behind a rock, he saw Sasuke flashing through some hand seals and charging his hand up with lightning chakra and running towards the only boulder without a mark on it, piercing through the rock like a hot knife through butter. Naruto's eyes widened at the sight, if he was impaled by that he would lose instantly, not to mention be in mortal danger. He would have to come up with some sort of counter to it. That's enough Sasuke, looks like too chitterous is your limit on a full tank of chakra, while still being able to fight, you can probably manage three, but you will have to be careful, said Kakashi to Sasuke who was panting with his hands on his knees. Okay Kakashi sensei, I'm going to go home now said Sasuke cause he shoved his hands into his pockets and walked off. Kakashi sighed, Naruto, don't you know it's bad to spy on your teammates? He said. Naruto walked up while scratching the back of his head nervously. I just wanted to see you after I came back said Naruto. Kakashi's eyes widened on seeing Naruto not wearing his orange jumpsuit, I see you had a wardrobe change. Speaking of which, where were you over the month? Asked Kakashi. I can't tell you Naruto said in a sing-song voice. Why not? I'm your team leader, it is my privilege to know where you were over the month said Kakashi. Okajijiji said I couldn't tell anyone. Said Naruto, was that a lightning jutsu you were teaching Sasuke asked Naruto. Yeah, it's my own jutsu, Chidori said Kakashi as his eyes narrowed, how would you know it was a lightning jutsu? Asked Kakashi suspiciously. 
It looked like one said Naruto with a deadpan, can you teach me it? One of my affinities is lightning. Asked Naruto excited at the prospect of learning a new jutsu. Your affinity lightning. As if I'll believe that, Naruto you shouldn't tell lies to your superiors. Said Kakashi disbelievingly. It's true. I can prove it. Said Naruto as he began to flash through the hand seals for Raiden. Raiku Henge, before remembering what the Hokage said and stopping. I can't prove it, Jiji said not decide Naruto, but can you teach me anyway? Pleaded Naruto. A no is a no, and that's final persisted Kakashi, it's not like you could do it anyway, your chakra control isn't nearly good enough. Naruto fumed, his own sensei didn't believe him, whatever he said throwing a glare at Kakashi and jumping off the mountain. He landed gracefully and ran to his house. Kakashi watched him before shrugging and pulling out a familiar orange book and walking away. Naruto sighed, he should have expected it from his sensei after all he only cared about Sasuke when the preliminaries ended and he and Sasuke had passed, instead of giving both of them equal attention, he decided to only train Sasuke and pawn Naruto off to Ibisu. It was only due to his meeting with Yuraya and his summoning accident that he received any valuable training at all. Naruto looked up at the sky, seeing the sun illuminate the sky with a variety of hues as it began to recede. Naruto sighed, it was time to go home. Naruto slowly walked home, he arrived a few minutes later, only to find his apartment ransacked, obviously by some stupid civilians, he went to his overturned bed, flipped it over and straightened out the sheets before crawling in and going to sleep. This entire ordeal from when Kakashi spoke to Naruto to when he walked into his ransacked home, was watched by the Hokage using his all-seeing ball. The Hokage sighed, I am sorry Naruto-kun he thought before he set the crystal bolt back in its place and turned to the ever-growing pile of paperwork. The Hokage stared outside the window wistfully and looked back at the pile of paperwork, the Hokage sighed yet again before looking at a picture hanging in his office, how did you manage to always be free Minato, I'm sure you had just as much or even more paperwork than me. He thought. The Hokage began to try to finish his paperwork. The next day. Naruto yawned before sitting up and rubbing his eyes, the sun shone through his thin curtains. Naruto smacked his lips and looked at his clock. He stared some time not comprehending the time, 8 o'clock before getting up, yosh, ill stat learning those new air rank jutsu from the scroll Hikari gave me thought Naruto, as he took out a scroll from his pocket and unsealed two jutsu scrolls, each with a wind and lightning jutsu respectively. Naruto scrutinized the two scrolls before picking up the wind jutsu scroll and reading through it, it was for the jutsu, Futen. Suresu Tatsumaki, wind release. Slicing tornado, the lightning scroll for the jutsu, Raiden. Mahiyari, lightning release. Paralyzing Spear. Naruto read through the description and hand seals for the jutsu, Raiden. Mahiyari would form a spear made of lightning which on contact with the opponent would paralyze him or her, the length of the spear depends on the chakra put into it while futen. Suresu Tatsumaki made three tornadoes with winds that could cut one caught in it, it could also move in the direction directed by the user. Naruto thought for a while both would be difficult, with a high level of chakra control required which he had due to his intense training, he just couldn't decide which one to learn. After a few minutes of thinking Naruto sighed and went to the nearest training ground before forming 100 shadow clones and sending 50 to work on one jutsu and 50 for the other. He handed each group a scroll and went to a corner and began to do the lightning stage 2 chakra control exercise. After several hours, both groups had some sort of success with their respective jutsu, the group working on the wind jutsu managed to accidentally create a jutsu which wasn't very useful, it just created a gust of with around the user. The clone forgot to do the snake hand seals, and the new jutsu was created. The lightning group made a full-fledged spear, but couldn't get the paralyzing part correctly, right now on contact it delivered a mild shock, but that was all. Naruto decided to take a break and started to walk to Ichirikus Raymond's stand when he heard a voice cry out, hey boss, where do you think you're going huh? Going to enjoy some Raymond when the rest of us train. Said one clone. The rest of the clones chorused their agreement. Naruto stared blankly at the clones before shaking his head, well I'm real, so I get to eat and replenish my energy, so I can train said Naruto. Boo. Why does the original get all the cool privileges? I want to be the original. Said another clone. No way. Go eat some shit. I'm gonna be the original. Who do you think you are? Yelled another clone. Both clones grabbed each other's cloaks and began to fight, one hit from Naruto dispelled them both. Now you will all train right? Remember it takes only one hit to send to take away your existence, Naruto smirked with an evil glint in his eye. The clones gulped and quickly nodded, by the way, that's enough with the new jutsu I want you guys to get down the first two jutsu sealessly. Said Naruto, now I'm gonna eat some ramen and come back to train okay? The clones nodded. Naruto walked off to Ichirikus and began to eat many many bowls of ramen. Several hours later. 
Naruto smiled in accomplishment, he was now able to do both the basic jutsu sealessly, but had discovered a use for the formerly useless jutsu, which he was now able to do sealessly as well. Flashback. One Naruto clone decided it would be funny to impale another clone with a lightning spear, he quickly did the seals and rushed toward a random clone, the clone happened to be the one who accidentally made the jutsu. The clone turned around to see another clone charging at him with a spear in hand. Son of A the clone began before unconsciously and sealessly execute the jutsu he had accidentally did before, except with a bit more chakra. The jutsu caused charging clone to get buffeted and not only spin around, now facing the opposite direction still charging, but also caused the spear to implode, the attacking clone managed to not get dispelled by some miracle. The surrounding clone stared in awe at the clone who did the wind jutsu. Naruto dispelled both the attacking clone and the one which executed the jutsu. What he got from the memories of the clones were astonishing, the charging clone had not even noticed he had been flipped until the last second, not only that, but the wind chakra from the burst collided with the lightning chakra in the spear, causing the spear to release powerful winds as it imploded. Naruto stood in shock at that point, the jutsu could negate lightning jutsu. He could negate Sasu team's lightning jutsu. Naruto did a quick jig in joy. And flashback. Naruto was now as prepared as he could get for the next day, he walked home with a smile on his face. End of chapter. Chapter 6. The Chunin exams begin. Naruto yawned and rubbed his eyes as he sat up from his bed, he looked at the clock which read 7.57 and smacked his lips uncomprehendingly. He blinked and his eyes widened, oh shit shit shit. He yelled, the Chunin exams begin at 8. Naruto quickly brushed his teeth and took a quick 10 second shower before running out of his house and locking the door. He sighed and looked down, realizing he was only in a towel here and back in, threw on his clothes from right Ningu, and wore his black cloak and dash out of the room. In the stands of the Chunin exam stadium. Where is Naruto? Sakura wondered, her brow furrowed in worry, he may have been an idiot, but he still was her teammate. Back with Naruto. Come on. Almost there thought Naruto. Naruto almost tripped on remembering his new jutsu, he sealessly executed a perfect triton. Raikou Henge, teleporting from his position and arriving at the entrance to the stadium. He sighed and stepped in, as soon as he did the eyes of everyone in the audience swept to him. Naruto just stood and blushed from the attention, he saw the competitors lining up and ran to join them. Boy Naruto, couldn't you be on time for once drawled Shikamaru while smirking at the blonde. I tried Shika, but I woke up late grumbled Naruto. He looked through the lineup for Sasuke, but didn't see him, Naruto frowned. He looked up at the audience and made eye contact with Sakura and waved with a smile, Sakura waved back as well. Naruto-kun, you made it thought Hanada as her cheek slightly turned red. Alright. Boom the Hokage with Jiraiya standing beside him, now that we have our contestants we may begin. The Hokage looked on each of the contestants' faces before nodding to Genma who was the new proctor. On seeing the Hokage queuing him, alright, will the first matchup of Naruto of Konoha and Niji of Konoha remain in the stadium, while the rest of you go to the stands in the competitor's box to await your turn said Genma. On hearing this Shikamaru and the rest of the competitors headed up to the stands, leaving only Naruto and Niji facing off. Hanabi, play attention to see the power of a Hayuga said Hiyashi to his daughter. Hanabi nodded. You should quit while you are ahead Yuzumaki, just as fate decreed that I would be the winner against Hanada-sama, fate has said the same about this fight as well, Niji said with a smirk. Have you forgotten Niji? I made a promise to Hanada-chan that I would defeat you. Said Naruto. Are both of you ready? Asked Genma, on seeing them Nadi jumped back and yelled, begin. An intense stare-off followed after the match began. Niji slid into his battle stance and activated his Byakugan. Taking this as the cue to begin Naruto executed a futon. Rapasho causing a gust of wind to blast from him picking up the loose end of the stadium floor, creating an effective smokescreen. DCH, such measly tactics shall not work against the might of the Byakugan, said Niji as he scanned his surroundings, seeing through the smokescreen of sand for any trace of Naruto's chakra, he smirked as he spotted Naruto's chakra signature a few meters away, rushing towards it to hit it with a chakra-enhanced palm strike. As he approached the same chakra signature appeared in front of him and hit him with a bone-jarring punch to the face from that had him flying off his feet and landing on his back a meter away. As the blow hit him Niji's eyes widened, he had not seen anyone there previously only the chakra signature in front that had not moved the entire time of the ordeal, Bunshin, clones, ought Niji. Niji got up and saw the same signature a distance away from its former position, Niji this time scanned all around him with caution, before dashing to attack Naruto, this time making it close enough to see Naruto's smirking face. Niji quickly attacked with a chakra-enhanced palm strike, as he hit Naruto he dispelled in a puff of smoke. 
Niji cursed, he had hit a clone, at Niji's momentary distraction he was kicked in the stomach, causing him to fall to the ground, Niji this time did not hesitate to lash out with his palm at Naruto who he saw after he was kicked, he heard a curse as he managed to hit Naruto's leg. Despite that Naruto kicked his face causing him to skid back and lose sight of Naruto. Naruto was having a bit of fun, he was enjoying beating Niji up until he was hit by Niji. He looked around and cursed yet again seeing the smokescreen he had made has all but dissipated. Naruto was about to do another repusha when he spotted Niji dashing towards him, with his hand drawn back ready for a strike. Naruto abandoned doing another repusha, instead doing a Raikou Hanjin flashing behind Niji and kicking him right in the ass. Niji cried out in surprise as Naruto kicked him on his rump, he fell forward, but managed to regain his balance and hit Naruto with a palm strike that Naruto saw coming, he did a sealess Kamiwari with a log a few meters away. Niji's strike broke the log in half. Niji turned to see Naruto a small distance away and dashed towards him, Naruto, in response, created six clones which simultaneously attacked Niji. Niji, smirked, Katen. Heavenly spin, he yelled as he spun and created a blue dome which dispelled all the approaching clones with ease. Yuzumaki. You will still fail, no matter how hard you try you cannot beat me. Said Niji, you are within my ray of divination. Said Niji. Dusan said Hanabi as she looked up to Hiashi who was watching the fight. I know Hanabi, he has learned the Katen, a main branch technique and he knows. Akira Kujikin SHM as well said Hiashi. He must be a genius of unrivaled potential if he could learn how to do not one, but two of the main branch techniques just be seeing them executed. The sad thing is that he holds intense hatred for the main branch, thought Hiashi as he looked at Niji with regret. Nice and how strong are you? Thought Hanada as she looked on at the fight. Naruto swerved to the side just barely managing to dodge the first two strikes in the series of 64. He continued to barely dodge each strike, every time he managed to dodge the eyes of Niji would narrow in rage, and the speed of the strikes would increase. Niji made it to 32 strikes and smirked at Naruto, before he continued his onslaught of palm strikes, this time Naruto dodged the first few, but the remaining he could not escape. Agony that is what described how Naruto felt at the time, he had been hit with not 5 or 10 of the palm strikes, but 19 so far, and the final strike in the series approached his chest. Naruto watched in horrid fascination as the strike began to close in, no one would make it in time to save him, he wasn't an idiot, having the main tenketsu in heart would mean certain death or at least a life crippling injury. Naruto began to close his eyes, seeing the final strike approach him in slow motion, before remembering the jutsu he had created on accident, if he remembered correctly, it spun the opponent away from him. Naruto, in a last ditch effort executed the technique, having to forcefully overload the jutsu to reopen some of the required tenketsu, it felt as if lava had been poured into his veins, as his tenketsu reopened they burned like fire, but the endeavor was successful. Niji had been blasted away from Naruto with a powerful gust of wind that sent him spinning away at high speeds, and he crashed into a wall, making crack spiral from the point of impact and blood shoot from his mouth. Niji fell to the ground using his hands to support himself as he winced from the pain. Naruto dashed in front of him, cocking back his fist and executing a powerful punch, which Niji managed to dodge causing Naruto to hit the arena wall, a crater formed from the point of impact. Naruto turned back to see an enraged Niji charging at him, Naruto created a dozen shadow clones and sent them at Niji, who before he could do a katen, was beaten back with a barrage of punches. Niji of course used his chakra to reinforce his body and greatly lessen the damage the blows dealt to him, he was running dangerously low on chakra, only having less than a twentieth of what he began with. Denton stared at Niji's battered form, surprised at him being so damaged compared to his opponent who looked like he could go another five rounds no sweat. Sakura stood next to the rails close by cheering Naruto on, yeah Naruto, beat him down. She yelled. Isn't that your teammate? The same one who was in that hideous orange jumpsuit a month back. Tenten asked Sakura. Sakura paused her cheering before looking to Tenten and nodding with a smile, yeah he and Sasuke are both on my team. She said in response, if Naruto is this good, Sasuke will be even better. She yelled. Tenten looked at her and shook her head and looked back to the fight. The winner of the fight was clear now, Genma began to step in to declare the winner, but abruptly stopped seeing Niji shook him a murderous glare. Niji scowled, he was going to beat Naruto's ass if that was the last thing he would do. He ran towards Naruto, he grace and speed far cry from what they had been in the beginning of the fight. Naruto pulled back his fist in waiting and hit Niji with a powerful uppercut, his remaining clones jumping in, Yuzumaki Naruto Renden. Yuzumaki Naruto Barrage. They shouted as they executed a powerful beat down on Niji, sending him into blissful unconsciousness. Yuzumaki Naruto of Konoha wins. Shouted Genma. 
The crowd applauded as Naruto walked back to the stands relatively unscathed from the match. He was just bruised from the palm strikes, and he pulled away from the group of medics and rushed to the stands receiving congratulations from Sakura and running up to the competitor's box and was greeted with pats on the back and congratulations. Thank you, Naruto-kun thought Hinata as she stared at her crush. Naruto just sat down and waited for the next matchup. The next competitors were Sasuke and Gara. Ichiha Sasuke of Konoha and Gara no Sabaku of Suna, please come down to the stadium for your fight shouted Genma towards the audience, Gara immediately appeared in front of Genma in a sand shunshin, sand body flicker. After a few minutes of no response for Sasuke he called again, Sasuke of Konoha, if you are not present in the arena within two minutes, you will be disqualified from the tournament said Genma. The Hokage sighed, it appears young Sasuke-kun has not appeared today, he will have to be disqualified, said the Hokage to the Kazakiage. Okage-sama, it would be very unfortunate for the many people including myself, who mainly came here to see the fight between the last Ichiha and my son would not be able to see it, don't you think Okage-sama? Asked the acting Kazakiage, perhaps a postponement of the match to the end and a scolding to the last Ichiha would be more preferable. Finished the acting Kazakiage smoothly. As you wish Kazuki Ajizama, though such blatant favoritism should not be shown, an exception will have to be made in this case, it will surely benefit both our villages on a large scale, without a doubt responded the Hokage as he called forth an Anbu and said some time to him. Don't think I am unaware of what you are doing here, Arachimaru thought the Hokage as he sent a glare at the veiled figure. Unknown to the wise and leader, Arachimaru caught a glimpse of the subtle glare sent his way, he eyes widened, did he know of the invasion? Or is this just because I challenged the rules? wondered Arachimaru and he turned to glance at the Hokage who was looking to the arena, most likely the latter, it is very unlikely for him to know, the invasion is fine, but me impersonating the Kazakiage is impossible, though the presence of Jiraiya within the barrier will cause a hitch in the plans, it is manageable, thought Arachimaru as he reassured himself and turned his attention to the arena. It seems as if Sasuke is now began Genma before he paused due to the arrival of an Anbu, after a few seconds of speaking, Genma looked back to the crowd, the match has been postponed to the end until further notice said Genma. He looked to the roster, Shikamaru of Konoha and Tamari of Suna, please come down to the stadium for your fight, shouted Genma. Sakura sighed in relief at the notice that her beloved would not be disqualified. Troublesome, wonder if I should just quit wondered Shikamaru as he looked around. Oi Nara, you common or what? yelled Tamari from the arena as she cracked her knuckles menacingly, cause if you don't. No way are you backing out of this shika. Said Naruto joyously as he kicked Shikamaru into the arena from the competitor's box. Shikamaru landed on the arena floor in a heap, he got up and gave the finger to Naruto, who stuck his tongue out in response, he mumbled about stupid and troublesome blondes as he trudged to the center of the arena. Geez kid, could you look any more excited to be here said Genma sarcastically as he sweat dropped. Shikamaru yawned and rubbed his eyes as he looked at Tamari who looked back at him, a girl again. This is gonna be a pain, if I lose, I was weak enough to be beaten up by a girl. If I win, I beat up a poor girl thought Shikamaru, and I can't forfeit or else Eno and mother will be on my case. Shikamaru groaned. Don't wanna fight a girl. Said Tamari as she glared at Shikamaru. Actually yeah, it's such a pain said Shikamaru as he blinked. Proctor can we begin? Seethed Tamari glaring intensely at Shikamaru with barely controlled rage. Oh great, now I pissed her off groaned Shikamaru. Again. Yelled Genma as he leaped back. Damari fully unfurled her fan, revealing all three moon from the beginning, take this. She yelled as she sent an enormous gust at Shikamaru who responded by darting into the minimal cover provided by the rocks in the corners of the arena. Rocks cannot protect you Nara. Yelled Tamari as she swung her fan at the rocks where Shikamaru was hiding. Shikamaru was blown back from the force of the gust of the wind that Tamari had sent his way, the rocks had lessened the damage, but had done little to prevent the wind from gathering him into its clutches and tossing him to the wall of the arena. Shikamaru frowned and cursed at himself, he had made a major mistake in angering her so much, at the moment he could only wait for her to expend all her chakra in the tantrum she was throwing, he had no opportunity to use his shadow techniques at all. All he could do for now was wait for her to run out of chakra, which would not take far too long at the rate she was going, or for her to cease her tantrum. He looked up from where he was lying down to see Tamari readying for another swing of the fan to blow him back to the wall yet again. Shikamaru cursed yet again and ran to the wall to the right of Tamari, she was unprepared for his movement and her gust continued on in the same direction, not causing any damage to him whatsoever. He grabbed a few shuriken and tossed them at Tamari, she used the metal side of her giant metal fan to deflect the incoming shuriken, but none of them even came close to her. Are you even trying? Yelled Tamari as she released yet another torrent of wind to injure Shikamaru. He opted to take a leaf from a certain blonde ninja's book and do the unexpected, which was running toward the wind which was blowing towards him. 
what is that kid doing yelled Asuma as he stared at Shikamaru run toward the oncoming gust of wind, which would blow him back and injure him even more. He is your student Asuma said Kurinai as she shook her head and the seemingly stupid action of the Nara. Shikamaru smirked slightly, he had only one shot at this, using his chakra to enhance his legs, similar to how he used his chakra to make his legs stick to the bark of the tree, and he jumped, since this was his first time he overshot. He jumped above the oncoming gust of wind and landed just outside the range of his shadow away from Tamari, who still had her arms extended in the pose, which she shot the gust of wind from at Shikamaru. Using the shuriken he has thrown on the ground previously, he extended his range and captured Tamari's shadow using the Kajime no Jutsu, shadow imitation technique. Shikamaru then grabbed a kunai from his leg holster, an action which Tamari imitated, she had no leg holster, so she just mimed the action. If you don't forfeit I will throw this kunai at you drawled Shikamaru. Tamari glared at Shikamaru, fine, Proctor I forfeit she said. Then Shikamaru was struck with a brilliant idea, after he released Tamari from his shadow, Proctor, I forfeit as well said Shikamaru with a smirk, everyone in the audience face faulted. What the hell Shikamaru? You had the match in the bag. Yelled Asuma. What do you mean you forfeit? You made me forfeit so you could as well. Shouted Tamari. Yeah, this way it's a tie and I don't have to fight anymore, it's a win-win. Said Shikamaru with a smirk. Asuma slumped, I guess I asked too much of him, having to win and continue the tournament, that was too much to hope for said Asuma as Kurinai shook her head in response. Well Jana said Shikamaru as he trudged up the stairs and sat next to Choji. Tamari stomped off to find her brothers and left the arena in anger. Naruto chuckled at the sight and leaned forward in anticipation of the next match. Looks like it is now time for the next match, Shino Aburam of Konoha and Gara no Sabaku of Suna please um to the ring announced Genma. Then Kuro on seeing Tamari glare at him, Proctor, I forfeit he stuttered ignoring the glare sent to him by one Shino. Is there reason for your forfeit? Asked Genma suspiciously. Yeah actually, I didn't have a chance to repair my puppets after the damage dealt to them in the prelims, without them I'm useless. Said Kankuro while rubbing the back of his head. Genma accepting the reason, nodded to Shino, Shino Aburam wins the match by default. Said Genma, now it is time for the final match said Genma as he looked to the Hokage for approval, on seeing his nod Genma continued, can Sasuke of Konoha and Gara no Sabaku of Suna please come down to the ring, said Genma. As he had done previously Gara Shunshine to the ring and swirl of sand. On seeing Sasuke not arriving, Sasuke will be disqualified if he does not turn up for the match, there is no further postponement announced Genma. Suddenly a large funnel of wind formed in the center of the ring, as it dissipated two figures became visible, sorry hope we aren't late said Kakashi with an eye smile as Sasuke stood beside him clearly uninterested. The crowd sweat dropped at the manner at which Kakashi entered the ring. Genma shook his head and nodded at Kakashi. Sasuke seeing Genma beckon him to stand in front of Gara, took his place while his hands remained shoved in his pockets. Kakashi shunshined to the jonin box and casually asked the rest of the jonin, so, what did I miss? Asuma chuckled, well your student, Naruto pulverized Niji only having a single close call in the match he said. Kurinai nodded in agreement, what did you teach him Kakashi, to have the dead last of the latest batch be able to beat the rookie of the year of the former batch like that? She asked. Kakashi looked at his fellow jonin in surprise, um, I taught him how to tree walk. He said nervously. The jonin who had been previously leaning in to hear what Kakashi had to say face faulted at this. That is beside the point. Why did you come so late, that is very unyouthful of you Kakashi. Said Guy with a frown. I bet you're just sad your student lost a mind so badly chucked Kakashi. No thanks to you chuckled Asuma. Kakashi glared at Asuma before taking a seat to watch the match. Mother wants your blood at Cheha. Yelled Gara with a gruesome smile on his face. Dch, let's get this over with said Sasuke with a smirk as he activated his Sharingan, earning him the cheers of the civilian audience. Show off said Naruto as he rolled his eyes. Begin. Yelled Genma before leaping back as to not be caught in the crossfire. Sasuke ran towards Gara with his Sharingan activated, effectively dodging all the tendrils of sand Gara sent towards him, until Gara caused the sand under him to rise up and try to encase him, Sasuke jumped back and grit his teeth in annoyance. He started to run towards Gara, only to be forced to jump back by the sand shuriken Gara sent his way. Soon a shigure. Sand drizzle. Yelled Gara as sand fired at Sasuke at amazing speeds, Sasuke was forced to jump back yet again, this time he felt the edge of the arena behind him, there could be no more jumping back. Sasuke started to run at Gara, suddenly turning to the side and going around in an attempt to get to the back of Gara. Gara in response sent a wave of sand from his gourd at Sasuke which grazed him. Sasuke managed to get in front of Gara, he pulled back his fist for a punch with a smirk, and he shot his punch quickly, aiming for Gara's head, only to be stopped dead in its tracks by Gara's sand. 
Sasuke's eyes widened, he was at point-blank range, and he couldn't do anything. Ara gave his a bone-chilling grim and sent a sharp tendril of sand at him to impale him in the chest, Sasuke jumped back yet again, this time the tendril managed to draw blood, it cut through his shorts and made a gash on his leg, extending from his mid-thigh to slightly below his knee. Sasuke grit his teeth at the pain and continued to leap back. He had no way to hit him with his tajutsu, his fire jutsu would not work unless he superheated it which he was unable to do, he looked to the jonin box as if for approval, Kakashi caught his eye and nodded. Sasuke grinned and went through the seals for Chidori, the ring was soon filled with the sound of chirping birds. Ara looked on at the jutsu with interest which soon turned into fear, mother says to stay away, her defenses can't help. Screamed Gara. Sasuke charged at Gara, swiping at the incoming tendrils causing them to fall away. Gara, in an attempt to save himself, created a dome of sand around himself in an attempt to block the Chidori. The barrier did little to slow the jutsu, slowing it slightly before going through the sand as a hot knife through butter, before going through Gara's ass, which was coincidentally in the direction Sasuke had been coming from. Gara howled in pain, the pain of a lightning blade, forcefully entering his anus and ripping his asshole, making it even larger, was something that would make the bravest and hardiest men cry. The sand around Gara fell away revealing to the audience what had happened. Omai said Kurinai with a hand on her mouth which besides her best efforts, began to curve up into a smile, clearly startled by what she had witnessed. Bakashi just sat in shock of what had transpired, Sasuke used his prize jutsu to shove his hand into a foreign shinobi's ass, who happened to be a boy, which made it far worse. Asuma fell off his seat laughing at the look on Kakashi's face and at the sight of Sasuke's hand, now not encased in lightning, up Gar's ass. I on the other hand, being as eccentric as he was, got the complete wrong idea, Sasuke. How dare you act so passionately with the one who so grievously injured you comrade. He yelled, that is very unyouthful. The Jenin on the other hand had extremely varied reactions, Ino and Sakura stood in shock at the realization that their beloved was apparently swinging that way and had taken an interest in the Suna boy. Hiba and Naruto on the other hand both laughed their asses off at the scene, Shikamaru just blinked, not predicting one of his former classmates was actually of that type. Damari stared at the disgusting sight, despite all his death threats, he was still her brother, a brother who had just been violated by the last Ichiha no less. The rest expressed varied degrees of humor and discomfort on witnessing the scene. In the cage box, the Hokage winced, that won't be very good to Konoha, the clients may think we support such behavior amongst our shinobi he thought. Arachimaru and the guys of the Kazakiage just stared uncomprehendingly at the sight. The situation was very different in the ring, Sasuke stood with a horrified expression on his face, his head was inside another boy's ass, that shout from Guy didn't help much, the murmuring of the crowd showed that the populace of Konoha was currently thinking that he wasn't exactly straight. Sasuke pulled out his hand from Gara's ripped ass with surprising ease, though accompanied by a sickening squelch sound. Gara was in intense pain at the moment, he felt a warm liquid running from the hole in his body, he moved his hand close to the violated area and took some of the liquid in his hands, and it was blood. My blood. Said Gara manically, he re-encased himself in a sphere of sand, this time distorted mutterings coming from within, I am sorry mother, I tried my best, please forgive me, I am sorry. He said, mother no. Sasuke began to ready another Chidori when he spotted white feathers coming from the sky, distracted by this he didn't notice Gara's sand barrier full away, or his siblings grabbing him as they jumped away heading towards the forest that surrounded Konoha. Sasuke managed to escape the Jinjutsu which accompanied the falling feathers and noticed the absence of Gara. catching a glimpse of Tamari he started running after them. Naruto easily brushed off the Jinjutsu and looked over to the incoming ninja, who had got up from the stands and began to attack, Kakashi, and the remaining Jonin ran to intercept them. Naruto saw Shikamaru on the ground, Saidi gave him a kick to the torso, promptly causing him to get up, oh I Naruto, I'm trying to sleep here. Naruto shook his head, now is not the time we have to go help Sasuke and the rest of the people. I believe, I can be off assistance Naruto sent came the monotone from behind Naruto. Nar Naruto nodded in thanks oh Shikamaru, he asked questioningly. Troublesome, but I guess I will come too said Shikamaru. Naruto ran to Kakashi, sensei, we are going to go help Sasuke he said. Kakashi dispatched of the current enemy he was fighting with a quick thrust of his kunai into the man's sternum and turned to Naruto, okay, but take Pakin, he can help you track him he said before summoning a small pug. Naruto nodded to the dog, hey Kakashi. The dog asked, why did you call me here? I'm not much in a fight. Akin, I need you to help my student to track my other student, Sasuke said, on seeing the small dog Nadi continued, I need you to go as fast as you can, Naruto take Sakura as well. Naruto nodded and went to wake Sakura with Pakin before Kakashi leaped back into the fray. Naruto, what happened? Sakura asked after she woke up. 
No time to explain we have to go help Sasuke, I can tell you on the way he said before nodding to Shikamaru and Shino. So are you ready? Asked Pakan, on seeing their nods he dashed off in the direction Sasuke had disappeared. Naruto and his hastily assembled team ran at the fast pace set by Pakan, they leapt from tree to tree occasionally turning, after a few minutes of running they found burn marks, Sasuke's fire jutsu thought Naruto, as they continued to run soon encountering a full on battle site, trees uprooted, leaves still burning and having cuts on them, the ground was scorched. Naruto looked at Pakan who shook his head, they took only a few steps when a squad of Odonin jumped down from the branches. Naruto grabbed a kunai and held it at ready position in a reverse grip the other members similarly acting. Shikamaru. You, Shino and Sakura-chan go on, I'll take care of this and come with you shouted Naruto. Shikamaru looked at Naruto as if debating with himself before nodding to him and continuing on his path. Naruto be careful said Sakura as she went forward with Shikamaru and Shino. Naruto glared at the Odonin, oh looks like the little wee behind the ears Genin thinks he can take on fortune and from Odo, said one ninja with a smirk, as good as you are, I doubt you can take all of us on. Naruto grit his teeth and flashed through the seals for Futen. Suresu Tatsumaki pumping a good amount of chakra, enough to make three raging whirlwinds with slicing gusts. The whirlwinds moved towards the ninja with surprising speed, one of the ninja quickly gained several cuts on his body, sending him out of commission the three remaining ninja leaped back, one of them moved forward and did a small katen jutsu, only lighting the tornadoes on fire, not turning them against Naruto, needless to say they panicked and while they were distracted. Naruto created three clones and sent them behind the three ninja, knocking them out by hitting their heads with the blunt end of a kunai. Naruto willed the flaming tornadoes to dissipate and with the help of his clones, tied up the three ninja before rushing off with his clones in the direction he team had ran off. But the rest of the team. Sakura ran forward with Pakan with tears forming in her eyes, Shikamaru and Shino had broken off to deal with another squad of Odonin, leaving her to continue on the path to find Sasuke and the Suna siblings alone. She heard a roar which she gasped at the sound, serving to motivate her into moving faster. After going further she and Pakan soon found Gara and Sasuke, a battle which happened to be extremely one-sided. Sakura looked on at the sight of her crush's bloodied body and bit back a sob, the problem was, and she could do nothing to help. But Shikamaru and Shino. It had taken them some time, but with a combination of Shikamaru's Kajimane and Shino's Kikage bugs, they managed to beat the squad with the help of Naruto who appeared near the end. Flashback. Shikamaru was bloodied from being impaled by a kunai from one of the ninja who was silenced by Shino soon after, by swarming his beetles and draining him off all his chakra, leaving them four more ninja to deal with. They were relentless with amazing teamwork, each had abilities that complemented the rest, one of the shinobi would send a fire jutsu, which was made stronger by a wind jutsu form another odo nin, the third nin would use a jinjutsu on the opponents, making them unable to notice the roaring fireball approaching. The last nin would always use an earth jutsu boxing them in from three sides, except from the side of the approaching fireball, Shikamaru shuddered, they would have no chance if the fifth ninja was still in the fray. After much help from Shino, draining their chakra and not allowing jinjutsu nin to cast any jutsu by engaging him into jutsu, he finally caught them in a shadow bind, after they were momentarily distracted by him, fainting his shadow to one side, but splitting it into two tendrils, one to distract the other to capture, after many attempts at this Shikamaru caught. The in the Kajimane bind, but was nearly out of chakra he couldn't hold them off much longer than 10 seconds, and Shino couldn't drain them all of their chakra sad enough, they had little chance they would survive the ordeal much less win. Suddenly three figures each in a dark cloak rushed forward from the shadows, all holding what seemed to be a long spear made of lightning. The figures tapped each one of the ninja with his glowing spear, before allowing it to dissipate a turning of his head, revealed it was Naruto and his clones, after dispelling his clones, Naruto nodded to him. Shikamaru understanding what he meant released the Kajimane, to his surprise the Odonin collapsed to the ground and began to spasm, I paralyzed them, explained Naruto. Shikamaru nodded and looked to Shino, who was concentrating on directing his beetles to drain the ninja of their remaining chakra, after a few minutes of waiting Shino turned to them, they have no chakra left he said. Naruto made three clones and left them to bind them with ninja wire as they rushed off. Flashback end. Shikamaru on realizing he was almost out of chakra, popped a soldier pill into his mouth to replenishing his chakra. After a few seconds Shino stopped, come out he said in monotone. So it seemed you found me, the Achiha may have passed me, but you began Tamari. As soon as Tamari had begun to speak Naruto created a clone and sent them discreetly behind Tamari to knock her out. The clone jumped to the forest floor and used Raiten. Raiku henge to flash behind her and chop her neck knocking her out. Shikamaru stared at Naruto with a raised eyebrow. Oh don't give me that look, we don't have the time. Said Naruto. 
as the clone tied up the Kinoichi they went forward, it only took a few minutes before they encountered the scene of battle, Sasuke had strange marks over him and seemed to be fighting a losing, it wasn't looking too well at all, Gara was looking fresh and his brother Kankuro had yet to lift a finger. To his confusion, there appeared to be two of Sakura, he brushed off the sight temporarily. Your blood shall saturated mother's thirst. You who ripped my ass open. Screamed Gara with a bloodthirsty grin. Had it been under different circumstances Naruto would have fallen off from where he was sitting from laughter, but now was not the time for such things. Shino immediately took action, subtly sending his insects to Kankuro and Gara to sap their chakra, hopefully they wouldn't have to fight at all. Half of the insects Shino sent to Gara immediately died, Shino eyes widened in surprise, he called back the remaining insects, Gara has corrosive chakra, my kickage can't absorb his chakra said Shino. Naruto nodded, send your insects to Kankuro, at least he won't be able to fight he said. On seeing Shino nod, Shikamaru, I want you to see if trapping Gara and your shadow prevents him from using his sand said Naruto's. On hearing this Shikamaru crept closer and sent his shadow to connect with Gara's, Gara immediately noticed his inability to move, he glared in Shikamaru's direction, soon a shuriken, sand shuriken, he yelled sending a dozen shuriken in the direction Shikamaru was, Shikamaru cursed, he disengaged his shadow and jumping away. Back to Naruto and the rest of his squad. Gara seeing he regained his ability to move he resumed his attack on Sasuke. Mother will have your blood itcha yelled Gara in his warped demonic voice as he sent a tendril of sand at Sasuke, while Naruto and his team watched in horror, this time Sasuke wouldn't be able to escape. But Sakura. She was trying to get Gara's attention for at least some time so Sasuke could recover, but Gara ignore all the shuriken she threw at him as he proceeded to inflict a merciless beatdown on Sasuke. She couldn't do anything, she was worthless, Sasuke was going to die, and she could do nothing to help. Sakura jumped back seeing the body of Kankuro drop to the ground suddenly, out of his jacket fell a scroll. Sakura looked at Kankuro cautiously before rushing forward and opening the scroll before unsealing its contents, she sobbed in relief at last she could do something, in the scroll, along with various vials of liquids that she assumed to be poisons, was a large stack of explosive notes. And she planned to put them to good use. She tree walked to the branch above Gara. if Sasuke or Gara noticed, they didn't show any sign of it, if what she thought worked, then she could save Sasuke. She took one explosive note and tried to drop it on the branch beneath Gara. to her relief they landed. She remembered that Gara may notice her presence, so she created a bunshin and sent it down to her previous position to throw illusionary kunai at Gara. After a few minutes, each second of which was agonizing as to see Sasuke getting beat up by Gara, she managed to drop most of her explosive knots on the branch, she armed them with a seal, now she had to wait for the right time to detonate them. But Sasuke. He was going to die, there was no stopping it, Gara was getting stronger while he continued to grow weaker, he looked at the approaching tendril, which was getting closer and closer to his chest, and he couldn't stop it. He let out a sigh, he would never kill his brother, he would never be able to get more power, and it is the end for him, there was going to be no true Uchiha left in the world today. As Asu closed his eyes and prepared for his oncoming demise, he suddenly saw a flash of light through his eyes and felt a warm liquid fall on his face, he slowly opened his eyes to see a figure clad in a cloak with his arm extended, holding the sandy tendril in his hand, he saw blood dripping from the hand of his savior and touched his own face. He looked at his hand which was now slightly stained with blood. How do you do scaredy cat? Said the voice of his savior as he turned around revealing his face, it was Naruto. Naruto a few minutes earlier. Naruto saw Sasuke prepare for his oncoming death, he cursed as it he would have to save him, and he flashed to the spot to intercept the tendril of sand using Raiden. Raiku Hanjin grabbing it with his hand. How do you do scaredy cat? He said. Naruto turned back to see the surprised face of Sasuke, before turning his attention back to Gara and punching the tendril of sand in his hand with his free hand, causing it to fall away. He then stopped the flow of chakra into his weights and ran forward at a speed rivaling that of Rock Lee, with his first gate open. He pulled back his hand before punching Gara in the face. Gara's eyes widened in surprise as he was thrown back by the force of Naruto's punch. Naruto looked down on the branch to see dozens of explosive notes on it, he quickly looked up to see Sakura, who nervously waved at him. He nodded at her, Sakura-chan, detonate them at my signal. He yelled, on seeing Sakura nod, he turned his attention back to Gara, who got up and had mended the damage to his sand armor. Gara rushed at Naruto who darted back grabbing the back of Sasuke's shirt and jumping in the air before shouting, now Sakura-chan. Sakura nodded to him before waiting an extra second so Gara would be in the center of all the notes before jumping away herself and crying out, Katsu. As she detonated the field of explosives on the branch. Gara was engulfed in an enormous explosion, a body was thrown out of the explosion, landing on the ground a distance away. 
Naruto looked at the burnt body of Gara, which was partially encased in a dirty glass before sighing in relief, they had beaten him. He looked over to see Sakura grin at him before running to him. How are Shino and Shikamaru? She asked worriedly. Naruto chuckled, why don't you ask them he said as Shikamaru and Shino emerged from the bushes they had been hiding behind. Dot. Sakura took Sasuke away from Naruto, lying him on the ground. Sakura-chan, what were those marks on Sasuke I saw before? Sakura hesitated, I'll tell you later Naruto she said before removing Sasuke's shirt. Sakura-chan, what are doing to him? Don't do such things here. Naruto said mischievously. Sakura stared at Naruto confusedly before the full meaning of Naruto's word dawned on her, and Eru too. She said as she began to blush madly. Ugh eyes, we aren't finished, said Shikamaru nervously as Gara began to stand up. No way Sakura whispered in disbelief. Naruto readied a kunai as Shino and Shikamaru did the same. Gara stood up with a grin before saying, Tanuki Neri no Jutsu. Raccoon sleep technique. Gara fell to the ground in a heap, uh? Began Shikamaru before several tons of sand materialized and formed into the shape of a large raccoon with curse mark-like markings across its body. I'm free. Yelled Shukaku as he leered down at the Kanoha Genin. Naruto looked at the hulking form of the Biju before cracking his knuckles, guys, I need you to back away. He shouted. On seeing his friends jump back he flashed through a few seals and biting his thumb before hitting his hand on the ground, Kuchius no Jutsu, summoning technique, he yelled. The area was obscured from sight by an enormous cloud of smoke, a giant silhouette was visible, and as the smoke diffused the figure of an enormous wolf became visible. Oh, Abiju, it has been a long time since I have seen one, the Ichibi I presume, summoner. Said Maidowin. Yes, Maidowin I humbly request your assistance in this fight, said Naruto slightly bowing. No need for such mannerisms, of course I will help you, it is a rare opportunity to fight Abiju, but who is that figure on its forehead? Asked Maidowin. That is his Jinchuriki said Naruto. This will prove to be difficult, I have no qualms with killing the boy, but now the Ichibi has a form, it may not disappear, we must wake him. Maidowin exclaimed. Naruto nodded, can you hold off the Biju for some time? I believe I can blow him off the Biju's head asked Naruto to which the Raiju summon nodded. Naruto began to gather chakra, enough to summon another boss Raiju, this will take some time, but it would be helpful if you can get me close said Naruto. Maidowin opened his maw letting loose a torrent of lightning that flew from his throat to the torso of Shukaku, crystallizing its body from the extreme heat, Shukaku stumbled before countering with his own jutsu, Futen. Renkuden. Said Shukaku before hitting his crystallized stomach causing it to collapse and make Shukaku's jutsu fly into the air, missing its target. Shukaku's bodiless head fell to the ground, the shock causing Gara to fall loose from the sand and fall to the ground and awaken. Naruto sweat dropped, um Maidowin, what do I do with my jutsu? Maidowin snorted, use it to cushion your fall. What do you mean began Naruto before Maidowin dispelled, leaving Naruto suspended in the air. FK you Maidowin. Screamed Naruto as he fell to the ground, Naruto released some of his built wind chakra, causing him to stop momentarily before repeating the process until he landed on the ground safely. Shikamaru, Sakura and Shino rushed to Naruto who was slowly walking to a whimpering Gara. please don't end my existence whimpered Gara. Why would I do that? Asked Naruto. Because you beat me. Said Gara. Gara, I'm not like that, I fought you to protect my people, not to kill you said Naruto before taking out a kunai and hitting him over the head, slightly surprised that his sand didn't come to his aid, but dismissed it as him being out of chakra. Now, let's get our prisoners to Konoha and get Sasuke hospital, after we do that we can go assist Konoha forces. Said Naruto before dashing off with Sasuke on his back with the rest of his team following close behind. One more thing. I'm sorry for all of those who participated in the pairings poll, but I don't know how I can make Naritoxiji to work, so unless I can find a way he will, he will be with someone else. Chapter 7. Revival of the Brothers of Thousand Hands. Hiraya cursed as he saw the feathers falling from the sky, before quickly brushing off the Jinjutsu that followed, he jumped in between the seats in the cage box, brandishing a kunai at the Kazakiage. You won't kill the Hokage today Orochimaru. Yelled Jiraiya before leaping towards the Kazakiage. The Kazakiage jumped from his seat and shed his veil revealing a pale face and snake-like eyes, Orochimaru hissed, how did you know Jiraiya? It's none of your business, you backstabbing snake. Yelled Jiraiya. Orochimaru held a kunai to the neck of the sand aim, attack me and he will die. Yelled Orochimaru. Jiraiya ceased his assault and allowed Orochimaru to jump to the roof with Jiraiya in pursuit. Jiraiya charges at Orochimaru, catching his off guard, causing him to release the sand aim to ward off the oncoming blow. Jiraiya punched Orochimaru's guarding arm before jumping back with the sand aim. Make the barrier. Yelled Orochimaru, in response to which four shinobi and garb similar to that of Orochimaru, appeared on the roof of the cage box surrounding Jiraiya and the sand aim. 
They widely spread out in a shape resembling that of a square and flash through some hand seals. Nipu. Shishi Engine. Ninja Art. Four Violet Flames Formation, a purple barrier made from violet flames, formed around the Sound 4, as the box formed, another extension of the barrier formed, this time protecting the Sound 4 from within the barrier as well as outside. Jiraiya cursed, Sensei. How do we get out? I'm not willing to attempt to touch the walls, yelled Jiraiya to the third Hokage who along with him and Arachimaru were in the barrier. The cuckoo laughed Arachimaru, if you touch the barrier you will die Jiraiya. It will only dissipate when the sound four either die or run out of chakra, they have plenty so there is no chance. So you have come to kill me Orochimaru, I should have known said the third Hokage with a sad smile. Hiranya in a fit of rage, Kabari Senban. He shouted before firing off needles from his hair. Orochimaru chuckled on seeing Jiraiya use the jutsu, Kuchius. He yelled before slamming his hand on the ground, causing circular markings made from kanji to spread from the point he slammed his hand. Jiraiya and the Hokage prepared to copy Orochimaru's actions and summon Gamabunta and the Monkey King Enma respectively. As the smoke from Orochimaru's summoning disappeared, the two Konoha shinobi were surprised to see two wooden coffins which blocked the hair needles sent by Jiraiya, the sand aim ran forward as a third coffin began to rise from the ground, firing off a Katen Jutsu, causing the summoning to be stopped and the third coffin to disappear in a puff of smoke. The lids of the two remaining coffins fell open to reveal the Shadame and Nidame Hokages. Arachimaru you dare to complete that foul jutsu. Shouted the Sandame Hokage in shock from seeing his former senseis revived. Oh, it's Eru. Chuckled the Shadame, but how is this, I'm sure I died noticing the presence of his brother he continued, ah, this is the accursed jutsu you created isn't it brother said the Shadame with a frown. Tseru, who summoned us? Asked the Nidame. I apologize for my incompetence, it was my former student, Arachimaru said the Sandame regretfully. I hope you understand the consequences of doing my jutsu youngling said the Nidame. Arachimaru chuckled, attacked them. He yelled. I am sorry for this Eru, but we have no choice. He is powerful if he can have this degree of control over our bodies, even if they are not at full strength, said the Shadame. The Sandame nodded regretfully before throwing off his Hokage robes to reveal black battle armor and a helmet. He and Jiraiya prepared for the oncoming former Hokages, they nodded at each other before quickly flashing through hand seals, Katen. Karyu Enden. High release. Fire dragon bullet, said the Sandium before shooting a dragon made of flames at the Hokages, Jiraiya spat out an enormous stream of oil at the two Hokages, drenching them, after which the Sandium's jutsu hit the two Hokages enveloping them in a white hot raging inferno. The fire dissipated to reveal two extremely burned figures which were slowly rebuilding from the combination jutsu shot at them. Jiraiya rushed forwards, Doton. Swamp of the Underworld, he said before slamming his hands on the ground, transforming the ground into a swamp made of chakra-infused mud, trapping the former Hokages and causing them to quickly sink into the mud. As soon as they sank the Sandium fired off a large Nkakak baking the surface of the mud swamp, making it virtually impossible for the former Hokages to escape. It's over Arachimaru. Yelled Jiraiya. The cuckoo, it's far from over Jiraiya. Arachimaru chuckled. The two Kanoha shinobi watched in shock as the water began to soften the surface of the mud, before two figures jumped from it in pristine condition without a single scratch. Jiraiya and the Sandane dashed forward only to be stopped when the Shadane flashed through some seals, causing numerous branches of trees to rise up from the ground and block the path of Jiraiya and the Sandane. The Sandane flashed through four seals before slamming his hands on the ground, causing marking not unlike what Arachimaru formed to appear, and in a puff of smoke Enma, the Monkey King appeared. Jiraiya looking up at the roof of the barrier as if judging the height, shook his head as a negative for summoning Gamabunta, and did his own summoning forming markings to appear, along with the customary puff of smoke revealing Gama. Enma nodded to the Sandame after acknowledging the presence of Arachimaru and Jiraiya, without asking and question transformed into an adamantine staff. Katen. Nkakak no jutsu said Jiraiya before firing off a medium-sized fireball to burn through the branches, obstructing their path before running forward towards Arachimaru, only to be repelled by the Nidame's water jutsu. Gama. Try to engage one of the cages just for a little bit. Yelled Jiraiya. Gama leaped to the Nidame before spitting water in his face and engaging him into jutsu, using the momentary distraction Jiraiya ran forward towards the Shadame, leaving the Sandame with Arachimaru, oh it seems, I will have to fight after all. Said Arachimaru before pulling out the Kusangi note Surgi from his throat and swinging it at the Sandame, only to be blocked by the Hokage's staff, which then lengthened ramming into Arachimaru's chest and sending him skidding back. The Sandame used his staff, swinging it at Arachimaru's sword hand, knocking the sword out of Arachimaru's hand. The Sandame then began to relentlessly batter Arachimaru, with his staff severely bruising him, unknown to him Arachimaru had been positioning his sword, making it float right behind the Sandame's back in position to pierce his heart. 
Hiraya noticing this, Gama, I can take them both for some time, just help the Sandame. He yelled as he leaped in front of the Nidame luring him away from Gama, leaving him to help the Sandame. Gama's eyes widened seeing the sword coming closer to pierce the Sandame's chest, Gama leaped to the Hokage in an attempt to defend him, the sword swiftly went forward, and there was a splash of blood and a thump. The Sandane was knocked to the ground by Gama who lay beside him uninjured, the Hokage tried to get up using his hand but felt no response, he reluctantly looked to his right hand, seeing only a stump cut off at the elbow. The Sandame's eyes widened in shock. Gama. I need you to help me. Yelled Jiraiya desperately as both the former Hokages pushed him back, he was almost on the edge of the swamp he had made, if he went a bit more back then it was over for him. Gama seeing the plight of his summoner rushed to his aid holding off both cage, I'm going into sage mode said Jiraiya before building up enough chakra in an attempt to summon the Elder Toads, before slamming his hands on the ground and summoning the two Elder Toads, Fukasaku comically was holding a fork and had a slug in his mouth, as if he had been eating, quickly, I need to go into sage mode. Yelled Jiraiya. Shima and Fukasaku nodded before jumping onto his shoulders, within a few moments changes became visible, Jiraiya's nose grew warts, and his red markings spread to cover his cheeks, Gama I'm ready. He screamed before jumping in and forming two Rasengans in both hands and slamming them on the chests of the revived cages. Gama rushed back to assist the Sandane. The Sandane wasn't coping well, he had lost his arm, and Ma transformed back into his monkey from summoning his own staff and using it to defend the Sandane. I can't continue this Hirazan. Yelled Enma. The Sandane nodded before jumping back and creating two clones, both of the clones doing one-handed hand seals for Shaiki Funan, while the original began to build Chakra. Hiraya. Bring them to me. Yelled the Sandame, Jiraiya nodded, and on seeing the clones understood and lured the cage to the Sandame's clones. As soon as he reached the position he jumped back over the cage, who had a spectral hand of the Shinigami plunged through them. The revived cage momentarily returned to their normal conscience, we are sorry for the trouble we have caused here as in said the Shadame with a sad smile. I am sorry for the fate I have sentenced to you responded the Sandame in kind. Within moments the souls of the former cage were sealed, the Shinigami growled in displeasure at not being able to get the soul of the summoner, but vanished back to where he was before content with the two souls he had gained. There is one left growled Jiraiya as he rushed to Urachimaru before forming a Rasengan and slamming it into his chest when he had been engaged with both Gama and Enma. Urachimaru dropped his sword in shock, Jiraiya rushed to the sword and pulled out a sealing scroll and sealed the sword within, not ready to take any precautions, Urachimaru snarled at his loss, and unwilling to lose his life, he nodded to the sound four who dissolved the barrier and ran forward into the forest surrounding Kanoha, with their master, Urachimaru, Jiraiya, still in sage mode. Nodded to Gamma before sending him back to his dimension before summoning Gamma Bunta and running after Urachimaru. Enma remained with Hiruzen who stood shakily on his legs. The dissolving of the barrier led to Anbu rushing in, the Sandane was laid on his back, while a medic got to work on the stump of his arm, after realizing how would be unable to reattach the arm. With Naruto. Naruto was running through the forest at high speeds when he saw Orochimaru with the sound four being chased by an ugly-looking Jiraiya on Gamabunta who was slowly gaining. Naruto looked to his teammates who looked back in understanding before dashing off to Konoha with the unconscious body of Sasuke leaving Naruto in the forest. Naruto flashed through the seals for a summoning jutsu and slammed his hand on the ground, a puff of smoke appeared revealing Hikari. Hikari looked at Naruto who was looking at Orochimaru and followed his gaze, Suu, do you want me to help you kill the toad dude or the homo guy wearing a dress? He asked. Naruto looked at Hikari and raised an eyebrow, okay homo guy, it is said Hikari before he and Naruto dashed off to intercept the sound shinobi. Hikari opened his mouth and let loose a stream of electricity, a smaller version of Meitouin's technique. The jutsu hit a fat man with an orange mohawk, sending him flying back and crashing into a tree and falling to the ground bruised. The attack caused Orochimaru and his guard to pause allowing Jiraiya to catch up with Gamabunta's help, who after Jiraiya jumped off of him, disappeared in a puff of smoke. Jiraiya ran through the sound four and punched Orochimaru right in the face, sending him flying back. Naruto nodded at Jiraiya before rushing at two of the sound shinobi, the guy with six arms and a girl with wild red hair. The red-haired girl, on seeing Naruto approaching, summoned her Doki, but before she could play any music Naruto ran up to her and bitch slapped her sending her flying, Naruto grabbed her flute from he hands and pocketed it. Hikari ran to the six-handed one who was apparently surprised at seeing a raging wolf charge at him and ripped one of his arms off, I mean he had plenty to spare. The red-haired girl glared at Naruto before saying, I am Teiya, you won't be able to beat me you cocksucker she yelled before reaching for her flute, she patted where they flute had been only to see no flute. Naruto gave her a cheeky smile before waving her flute and pocketing it again. 
The eye and anger activated her curse seal immediately, Naruto looked at her with surprise, until she jumped towards him and punched, Naruto dodged by a considerable margin, causing her to punch the tree behind him. Naruto took out a kunai and whacked her on the head with a blunt side effectively and efficiently knocking her out. He tied her up after noting her reverting back to normal and went to assist his partner Hikari. Hikari didn't need much help until the ass, now named Kitamaru, went into his curse sealed mode and summoned a giant spider. Naruto promptly rushed in with his super trusty kunai, sliding under the spider and giving it a few good whacks on its soft side, dispelling it, leaving Kitamaru alone who began to randomly fire off golden bullets, which almost hit Naruto at the speed that they were moving. Naruto rushed toward him only to be blocked by one of the guy's remaining five arms. Hikari ran to Naruto to assist and raked his claws across the sound shinobi's chest. Naruto took his trusty kunai and whacked the sound shinobi's head, expecting him to drop unconscious like everyone else he had whacked with it. Kitamaru to his surprise did not, Naruto sighed, and he had begun to believe it was a legendary kunai, guess it wasn't. Kitamaru jumped back to put some distance between him and his would-be killers. He fired a web at Hikari who became trapped in it, being a wolf he cleverly used his claws to cleave right through the web and continue forward. Meanwhile Naruto engaged Kitamaru in a bout of tojutsu, Kitamaru clearly having the advantage with his extra limbs, but Naruto made up for it with his raw speed and extremely well-honed reflexes. He punched Kitamaru in the stomach, sending him back with the force of the blow. Hikari leapt in front of Naruto with well-practiced ease, quickly forming a gust of wind to push back Kitamaru even further into a tree. Naruto and Hikari charged a Kitamaru at fraud as a team, as if they had been together for a long time which they had in the Cave of Sparks. Kitamaru was being beaten relentlessly by the combos Naruto and Hikari delivered successively, he grit his teeth before activating stage 2 of his curse seal to no avail. He was still being beat down, and Hikari had ripped off yet another of his arms, leaving him with four. Naruto went through a few seals and formed a spear made of lightning, Raiden. Mahiyari. He yelled as he formed the spear and rammed it into Kitamaru's chest, effectively paralyzing him. Hikari stared in awe, he had already been able to successfully reproduce one of the air rank jutsu he had been given before the exams began. Kitamaru died with the final thrust of Naruto's spear, sending many volts of electricity into his body. Naruto turned to Hikari, surprised. Hikari could only nod with what was assumed to be a smirk on his snout. With Jiraiya. Jiraiya lunged at Arachimaru with a giant Rasengan in his right hand, Adama Rasengan. Giant Rasengan. He yelled as he slammed it into Arachimaru's torso. Arachimaru, being as creepy as he is, shed his skin as a modified substitution jutsu, easily escaping Jiraiya's jutsu. Arachimaru reappeared from behind Jiraiya flashing through seals before holding one hand to his mouth and expelling a stream of fire shaped into a giant dragon, Katen. Karyu Enden. He yelled as he sent a giant fire dragon, much larger than usual at Jiraiya. Shima responded in kind, shooting a slightly smaller sized stream of water at the oncoming dragon made of flames, causing the two jutsu to cancel out. Jiraiya dashed forward and pulled back a fist smashing it into Orochimaru's face, only for Orochimaru to turn into mud, an earth clone cursed Jiraiya, before using the sensory abilities gained when in sage mode and in an attempt to find the real Orochimaru, only to be blindsided by a fat almost obese guy with an orange mohawk. Jiraiya looked at the newly entered Odo Nin, before discreetly forming a clone and sending it behind the fat shinobi. The clone quickly formed a Rasengan before slamming it onto the Odo Nin's head, effectively killing him with ease. Arachimaru reappeared just as the newcomer died, assaulting Jiraiya with a wide range of jutsu from every element. Jiraiya barely dodged an enormous wind-enhanced fireball that managed to singe his hair before growling in anger and taking off in the direction of Arachimaru, dodging oncoming jutsu left and right. Arachimaru quickly summoned a large snake and sent it off towards Jiraiya to delay him while he prepared a jutsu. Fukasaku and Shima both shot out a gust of wind and a stream of fire at the snake, both jutsu combined to form a raging inferno which consumed the snake, leaving a charcoal corpse which then dispelled leaving Jiraiya to run forward to Orochimaru undeterred. Orochimaru seeing Jiraiya approaching, sent his completed jutsu sending off two dragons, each made of water and fire at Jiraiya, before leaping up into the air and shooting off a bolt of lightning at Jiraiya. Jiraiya seeing the three incoming jutsu, opted to attempt to dodge at least two of them. Before Jiraiya could do anything a wolf and a boy appeared in front of him, the wolf immediately opening his mouth and letting out a torrent of bright yellow lightning at the two oncoming dragons, the wolf's attack briefly fraught with the two dragons before obliterating them. Naruto quickly expelled a gust of wind which effectively caused the lightning jutsu to dissipate. Nice job Hikari. Yelled Naruto to the grey wolf beside him. I see, so this is Naruto and his summon thought Jiraiya. Boy Iro Senen, there were four others with the snake bastard, so I'll find the last two and finish them off yelled Naruto. No need, I already took one out said Jiraiya. Where is the last one then? 
wondered Naruto. But Shikamaru. Shit. 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 Thought Shikamaru as he faced off against some cross-dressing Odonin. He separated from the rest of the group since Asuk's condition got worse and he need to get to Konoha immediately. So troublesome, should have let Shino take this guy, I obviously can't thought Shikamaru as he dashed forward with a kunai in hand. You can't beat me. I am Saken of the Sound 4 Kanoha scum, now stand aside and let me pursue the Achiha. Yelled the now named Saken who obviously wanted to take the Achiha to his master, who would he presumed would fulfill as his fantasies. I can't do that, Sasuke is my comrade. Said Shikamaru before sending his shadow at the Sound Nin. Ho ho ho, and Nara said Saken before jumping back to avoid the shadow. Saken smirked before activating his curse seal stage 1. He then ran at Shikamaru and engaged him in a bout of Tejutsu. Shikamaru barely kept up with his opponent, forced to go on the defensive, dodging or blocking each attack while waiting for an opening to enter a few of his own attacks. Shikamaru grit his teeth, unless he could use his shadow without seals he had no chance. Saken suddenly jumped back, time to take this up a notch he said before activating his cursed seal stage 2. To Shikamaru's horror he sprouted horns and his face grew longer now somewhat resembling a donkey. Saken smirked yet again, come out brother Yukin. He yelled before a face protruded out of his back and the rest of another body emerging. Yukin smirked, this was going to be easy. But Naruto and Jiraiya. Arachimaru had gotten away causing Jiraiya to exit sage mode and accompany Naruto to find the last of the sound 4. Where the hell is he? Yelled Naruto who had previously said goodbye to Hikari before he left back to write Ningu. You know he could have gone with Arachimaru right? Said Jiraiya. Naruto shook his head, I don't think so, he wasn't nearby he said. He could have run away when he saw the gallant Jiraiya-sama. Exclaimed Jiraiya. Naruto looked at Jiraiya and shook his head before continuing to run in the direction of Konoha, I think he went after Sasuke for Arachimaru he said. Jiraiya nodded, that was actually a very smart observation, and not that he would tell the brat of course, it wouldn't be fun like that. Jiraiya stopped in his tracks, well you may be right brat, I'm not too good at sensing chakra, but I can tell there are two people nearby fighting said Jiraiya. Let's go then said Naruto, Amiro Senen, I kind of knocked out one of the Odonin and tied her up. And I'm assuming you forgot him? Questioned Jiraiya. Yeah and it's not a guy it's a girl responded Naruto. Jiraiya looked at Naruto with a lecherous grin, well go back and get her Naruto I'll handle this, remember it's okay to have a little fun. Said Jiraiya with a smirk. Naruto glared at Jiraiya before giving him the finger and dashing back to where he had left the sound Kanoichi. Jiraiya went on to the two fighting chakra signatures with great speed. But Shikamaru. He was screwed and he knew it, it appeared they could inhabit other people's bodies as well. Shikamaru had learned that the hard way when one got on his arm, well that one was dead, he killed him with a kunai to the head which also stabbed his arm as well. Now the brother was out for his blood. Troublesome he thought. Saken was raging, the Kanoha scum managed to kill his brother, you are gonna die Kanoha scum. Screamed Saken as he rushed at Shikamaru. He was only a few feet away when a shadow fell over him and a fist punched him back with such force he flew back and impacted a tree. When Saken looked up he looked at the smirking face of one Jiraiya of Sanin. Needless to say, since they didn't need anyone alive, Saken died. But Naruto. Naruto sighed, the girl had still been knocked out when he slung her on his back, but woke up a few seconds ago, he was assaulted with such colorful language that he couldn't even understand half of what the damn girl was saying. Naruto looked up, does this make you feel like a man? Yuda started Taya when Naruto grew pissed and took her hat and shoved it into her mouth. Naruto sighed yet again, the hat wasn't enough. As Naruto continued to run, he soon met up with Yuraya slinging an unconscious Shikamaru on his back with a battered corpse a couple meters away. Was he the last one? Asked Naruto. Yes yeah, said Jiraiya before he looked up at Naruto and let out a whistle, you got quite the looker there. He said referring to Teiya who on hearing this let out a fresh stream of curses, which were barely muffled by the head in her mouth. Quite the mouth too. Said Jiraiya lecherously. Naruto glared and went on back to Kanoha with Teiya still on his back. Teiya, unnoticed by the others, developed a slight blush on being carried by Naruto. Later in Kanoha. Naruto sighed in relief, he had taken Teiya to the interrogation division, much to her apparent fright and disappointment, and jumped back into the fray, determined to help as many Kanoha shinobi as possible. He had first launched a futon. Suresu Tatsumaki, sending three slicing tornadoes at the oncoming horde of Odonin, taking out a good deal of them before rushing into the horde, after creating a hundred cage bunshin which all pulled out kunai and began to overwhelm the horde of sand and sound nin. He continued to run forward dispatching of each chunin level or below level ninja with ease and avoiding the jonin when he was able to. After an hour. 
Naruto stared at the retreating foreign shinobi and collapsed to the ground exhausted, he got up with considerable effort and decided that he fancied a cup of Ichirikus Raymond and trudged in the direction of where the stand was. After a few minutes of walking he came to a relatively unscathed Raymond stand with a line beginning to form, Naruto impatiently stood in line and waited for a few minutes before a vacant seat appeared which he quickly took up before waiting for AM to come and take his order. AM soon walked out from the inside of the stand with a bowl of Raymond for the person sitting next to him, on seeing Naruto, her eyes lit up, Naruto. How are you doing? She said as she began to fuss over him for a bit. Naruto enjoyed it for a bit, AM, can I have a bowl of Mizo Raymond and keep them coming? He said with a grin. AM smiled back and went into the stand with his order, after a minute of waiting AM came out with a bowl of Raymond, when Naruto was halfway through it, a figure sat down in the vacant seat next to him, Naruto momentarily looked up to see who it was, Aruka sensei Hi Naruto. I see you are unharmed. Said Aruka with a smile. Yeah. I fraught loads of people I am pretty sure I single-handedly turned the tides in Kanoha's favor. He said joyfully. Oh how so? Asked Aruka curiously. I took down Gara when he turned into the Ichibi, well that's what Maidawin called him anyway. Said Naruto as he dug into his second bowl of Raymond. Aruka sighed, Naruto you shouldn't take credit for what Sasuke did, that not good. Scolded Aruka. Naruto frowned, Sasuke hardly did anything, he ran out of chakra before Gara went all Ichibi, you can ask Shikamaru or Shino they were there. Said Naruto with a glare. Aruka frowned, whatever you say Naruto he said not believing Naruto. Naruto glared at Aruka, I'm done am, thanks said Naruto before dropping a few Ryo coins on the counter and running from the stand. Looks like I upset him, well I'm gonna check with Shikamaru, and Shino later thought Aruka before eating his cold bowl of ramen. But Naruto. Naruto looked down at the floor of his apartment with a sad face, I can't believe that Aruka sensei didn't believe me he thought as Aruka's words echoed in his head, Naruto you shouldn't take credit for what Sasuke did, that not good. Naruto flopped down on his bed and looked at his clock, he got up to freshen up with a bath and change his clothes. After a few minutes Naruto came out of the bathroom and opened his dresser and looked at his selection distastefully, it was filled with four more pairs of his orange jumpsuit. He sighed before summoning Hikari who on arriving in Naruto's apartment, looked at Naruto curiously. What do you want? There is no one to fight and most importantly, why the hell are you in a towel? Asked Hikari with what Naruto assumed to be a mischievous grin. The fight? No. Something even worse said Naruto with a frown before stepping aside to reveal the contents of his dresser. As soon as Hikari caught sight of the inside of the dresser he began to laugh in his weird beastly way, that is all you have. He asked Naruto with a smile on seeing Naruto nod, okay summon me back in 5 minutes. Naruto summoned Hikari back in 5 minutes, Hikari came from the smoke with a set of clothing similar to what he had been wearing before in his mouth, after dropping them of the floor of Naruto's apartment, this is all I can give you, get some custom made or something if you need any more said Hikari. Thanks Hikari. Said Naruto gratefully. Hikari nodded and disappeared in a puff of smoke. Naruto quickly put on his new set of clothes and dashed out the door and headed to the hospital, before running back and locking the door and then heading to the hospital. At the hospital. Naruto entered the hospital earning a glare from the receptionist, Naruto brushed it off, what room is Sasuke He asked. Room 401 she said through clenched teeth trying not to show her strong dislike for the Kayabi Jinchuriki. Naruto went up the stairs and reached room 401 to see Sakura and Shino in the room. Naruto looked at them with wide eyes before shaking his head, Shino. What are you doing here? Sakura I expected, but you? Asked Naruto incredulously. I came to see Sasuke. Why? Because I was recently discharged and wanted to see the rest of our team Shino frowned, I was unable to find you though. Naruto waved his hand dismissively, I wasn't too injured. I will be leaving now, I must see Shikamaru said Shino before exiting the room. Naruto. Said Sakura nervously. Yeah. Said Naruto. How are you so strong, I was so useless in the fight said Sakura with a frown. No, you weren't Sakura-chan. You put all the explosive tags, without you we couldn't have beaten Gara, Said Naruto defiantly. Sakura gave a grateful smile, I want to become stronger too, so I can stand beside you and Sasuke. She said with a smile. You can do it. Said Naruto. Ugh, can you keep it down? Said a drowsy Sasuke as he opened his eyes to the loud voices of both his teammates. Sasuke blinked before looking down to see his bandaged body, how did we win? Asked Sasuke. You were saved by the benevolent awesomeness of Naruto Uzumaki. Said Naruto with a smirk. DCH, yeah right, as if you, a dope, can beat Gara, you probably finished off my hard work, that's it, said Sasuke with a smirk. Sakura looked nervously between a frowning Naruto and a smirking Sasuke, saw Sasuke-kun. 
she began causing Sasu to turn to her. Naruto is telling the truth. After Naruto fought Gara for a while, I detonated a giant roll of explosive notes that I laid under Gara. We thought he was dead, but then he turned into a giant monster. Naruto summoned called him the Achibi. Finished Sakura nervously pushing her fingers together resembling Hinata. Sasu looked at Sakura curiously before logically accepting the truth for once. Well looks like the dope is quite strong. I want to fight you later said Sasuke with a smirk which turned into a frown. When did you get a summon? Asked Sasuke. Naruto stood up and poked Sasuke on the forehead with two fingers, like how Itachi had done before causing Sasuke's eyes to widen, that Sasu-chan is a secret, said Naruto with a smirk, bye Sakura, I'm going to go see Shikamaru, do you know his door number? Yeah, wait I'm coming to said Sakura to the surprise of both Naruto and Sasuke. As soon as Naruto and Sakura left the room, Sasuke's smirk turned into a frown, and he clenched his fists, I have to get stronger fast he thought. But Jiraiya and the Sandame. How are you feeling sensei? Asked Jiraiya as he watched the Sandame swing around his new prosthetic limb. Fine Jiraiya, I can channel chakra with this hand now, and I'm not feeling too bad responded the Sandame, still not removing his eyes from his new prosthetic limb, before turning to Jiraiya with a sigh, I can't be Hokage anymore, Jiraiya, please take over, said the Sandame with a pleading tone. I can't do that, why not Kakashi? Asked Jiraiya. The Sandame shook his head, he is on the right path, but he isn't strong enough he said, it's your Danzo now, I can't continue as Hokage. Jiraiya thought for a while, what if I bring back Tsunade? He said. The Sandame looked up, if you can then it is good, but I hope you don't get your hopes up, if she does not return you are to be Hokage. I will remain as Hokage for another month at most said the Sandame firmly. Jiraiya nodded, can I take Naruto? Asked Jiraiya. Sure just ask Kakashi first said the Sandame. Jiraiya nodded and left the room to find Kakashi. But Naruto and Sakura. They began to approach room 446, is that true? They heard from inside the door. Who do you think it is Sakura? Asked Naruto referring to the owner of the voice. Sakura shrugged, Shino. Naruto shook his head, Shino doesn't sound like that, well we are about to find out said Naruto, before opening the door to reveal Iruka talking to a bedridden Shikamaru. They both turned their heads on hearing the door opening, Iruka looked back to see a glaring Naruto and flinched. Sakura saw Naruto glaring at Iruka with surprise, ignoring it for the moment. Naruto, I'm sorry said Iruka, Naruto just looked to the side, ignoring Iruka who walked out of the room with his head down. What was that about? Asked Sakura. Naruto sighed, it's nothing he said, so how are you doing Shika? Asked Naruto. Good, I get to lay down and do nothing for a while, Shikamaru said contently drawing a sweat drop from both Naruto and Sakura. The three spoke for a bit before Naruto and Sakura left the room, Naruto bid Sakura good night before going their separate ways. With Jiraiya. Jiraiya only had to search a few minutes to find Kakashi who predictably was at the memorial stone. I screwed up big time with Naruto he thought sadly not noticing the presence of Jiraiya. Kakashi greeted Jiraiya. Kakashi looked back to Jiraiya and gave a nod, do you need anything Jiraiya-sama? He asked. Yes actually, I was hoping you would entrust Naruto to me for a month said Jiraiya. Kakashi sighed, yes yeah, sure, take him, but give him these said Kakashi, pulling out three jutsu scrolls and tossing them to Jiraiya. Jiraiya nodded and grabbed the scrolls and left Kakashi to his grieving. Hopefully I can make it up to Naruto, Sakura too thought Kakashi as he looked up at the sky, he would not fail them. Wahahaha. I'm so evil, I kept the third Hokage alive, see major divergence. Kakashi is regretting some shit as promised. How did you like that fight scene and stuff? I know this story is a little rushed, but I really want to get to the good stuff really fast. What if Naruto has two summoning contract Chunin exams, and thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.